live. And greetings, world, from a wonderfully lovely uh, Tuesday evening Florida day. That whole thing sounded much better in my head than when it actually finally got to the speech processing part of my brain. But good evening and hello, good morning, depending on what part of the world you're at. Uh, yeah, Mike is live, where? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so obviously we're already off to a stellar start here, uh, but welcome, I am Resplendent Seraph, we're going to be playing some Battletech today. <laughs> hey, Ghosty, how are you? That's right, it is evening, uh, although early evening out in, uh, out in California where you're at. Uh, we got a nice little, we got a nice little sun, sunset, sort of, there we go, now, I'm, now you can probably see it a little better. We got a nice little sunset behind me. Uh, it's always nice when it's not blind, when I get started an hour where it's not completely blinding and I have to close the blinds. But even then, when I close the blinds, it's still like a nice sheet of white. <laughs> yes, it is beautiful. We have, our, we have lovely sunsets in Florida. And uh, yes, it is. It is quite lovely. Um, oh, I know. The view. I love. That's what I love best about Florida. Now, Freakbot hates hates this place well i don't think he really likes the heat and i generally like it a little on the warm side so that that's part of it but right how do you how can you compete with that it's beautiful outside it's um i actually think it's about 75 degrees fahrenheit outside uh you don't need a photo you have a live view that's exactly right <laughs> uh i i affectionately consider where i live a tropical paradise it is absolutely wonderful most of the times out of the year it never hits 100 unlike uh some parts of the country. Um, I remember uh, when I was a kid, I would very frequently visit uh, with my dad, one of the, um, cause uh, he worked for a company Southmark and they had, their headquarters was in New York and that's where he always worked out of. But he would frequently travel to Dallas in Texas where I guess what their regional headquarters was. And so I would go with him to, uh, to Dallas and uh, that was my introduction to Texas. So in the winter it would be freezing and snowing and cold and awful. And then in the summer, it would be like 120 and it would be hot and it would be awful. <laughs> and so I learned at a very young age what extreme temperatures were. And of course, I grew up in Jersey. So uh, I, I grew very quickly to dislike snow. And uh, yeah, 75 isn't bad. It's it's nice. It's about 85 here on average. Oh, nice. OK, so you're you're in about same same temperate zone. And uh, so, yeah, 75 is nice. I at least think it's nice. Uh, our humidity is only about 60, which for Florida is not too bad. Usually that's what kind of gets us is the, is the humidity it tends to be uh, fairly high. And so it's not necessarily that the temperature, it's it's really the humidity. Um, but for the most part, Florida, we have, we're, we're, we, it always trends a little warm, but you don't get those extreme temperature swings. It's very rarely lower than 50 Fahrenheit. And it's extremely, also extremely rare for it to be above 100 Fahrenheit. I mean, most of the year, it's in like the 80s for the most part. Uh, ever see the Jersey Devil? I have never actually seen the Jersey Devil, but I think my brother has. I need to ask him about the Jersey Devil story of his. Although my suspicion, he and his friends were really drunk. But that being said, who knows what they saw? <laughs> but yeah, that's the local legend in Jersey. We, so in the States, we have a bunch of uh, urban legends and other like fantastical creatures. Um, I don't know if the Chupacabra is more Mexican, but out in like Texas and New Mexico and Arizona, you get stories of the Chupacabra. Around Kentucky, you get stories of the Mothman. Jersey gets the Jersey Devil. My goodness, we haven't even started the game yet and we're already on our, we're already on our first tangents. I love you guys. You're the best. <laughs> Oh, it starts already. <laughs> My eyes are stuck on time. No, no, apologize for nothing. This is great. Uh, I love hanging out with everybody. I mean, this is why I stream as opposed to just playing games by myself. It is so much more fun to stream and play with friends and have a good time. Yeah, what tangent? More like a cosine. But, uh, oh no, the sun is this. Yeah, it's going to set really quick. Within 10 minutes, it'll be gone. Uh, it, it sets super fast. So yeah, uh, if you blink, you'll, you'll miss it. So, uh, but yeah, it'll, it'll still be on in the background as we go here, but let's see while I, uh, while I crave sugar here. 
Sorry, I was thirsty. Uh, <laughs> and of course, caffeine is not what you really should be drinking when you're thirsty, but it was so beautiful when it was blue and orange. Yes, oh my goodness, those colors. And every so often we get a Sailor's Delight sunset here, and I don't remember ever having it anywhere else other than Florida. So I don't know if it's just something about the latitude or if other parts of the world have it, or if it has something to do with all the nuclear weapons we blew up in Nevada and help refract things in the atmosphere. But uh, every so often we'll get a, uh, so a sailor's delight sunset is the entire sky turns pink. And it's one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. It happens like a good, I would say two or three times a year. And it's just such a beautiful sunset. Uh, no, you know what? It, mu it, it must be a normal and natural phenomenon because uh, it was called Sailor's Delight because uh, if it was the actual expression is Sailor's Delight, uh, Weather's Delight or something like, yeah, new or nutty. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's one of the reasons why our, um, why our sunrises tend to be a little more colorful than sunsets. You know, you get residual particulates and whatnot. Uh, although I could be, you know, no, that doesn't make any sense. All that stuff's completely degraded. Uh, we haven't had an above ground test in like 40 years. So that can't be, it must, it must have something to do with the latitude. So Seraph's already kind of <laughs> figuring it out. Um, but yeah, so the expression is, uh, s s summer's, uh, uh, pink, pink sunset, summer's delight. Uh, what is the actual expression? You're, you're going to get to it first by accessing the, uh, accessing the almighty Google. But essentially, when you see that sort of sunset, it pretty much almost guarantees nice weather the next day. And uh, so there must be something about the atmosphere when it turns that kind of, yep, pink sky at night, sailor's delight. That's what it was. And so, yeah, we'll get, every so often, we'll get a pink sky sunset, and it's just amazing. It is a truly, um, <laughs> it, it is an awe-inspiring spectacle. So one of these days, 10 points for Saram, that's right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, one of these days, if I get, if we get like a pink sunset, I'll just have to run upstairs and hit the stream button so everybody can see it. Yeah, uh, I think I've got a picture of it on my phone somewhere. Maybe that was a previous phone. I'll have to dig around and see if I could find one of those pink sunset pictures, but it is beautiful. Uh, and every so often we get those here and it's, it's awesome. I, I, I love the place I live. Hmm. Or I will take a video and share. That is very true. And I can share it to my and your discords. So, uh, and just for sake of it, <laughs> while I'm, while I'm advertising it, uh, we'll also do some shout outs while we, <laughs> since I'm already in the chat section here. Oh, I typed it wrong, didn't I? Nope, I got it right. Cool. Excellent. Yes. And my bot is working correctly. That's always nice. <laughs> Pink sunset. Woohoo. But of course, uh, and as other, uh, I'm sure others will start filing in as we go here. But before we get really rolling uh, for the sake of uh, the YouTube channel, as I, because every time I stream one of these, I put it up on my YouTube channel. So if you are watching this on YouTube, the usual subscribe, like, bell, schnitzner down below. Uh, freaking tease and 10 already out for Overwatch. Wow, time flies. And thank you so much, Ghosty. Um, and I mean, Maxie's not on, so I can't thank him at the moment. But when I see him, I'll have to thank him again for inviting me to join in on the uh, Overwatch shenanigans yesterday. That was fun, although I felt bad because all I did was die the whole time. <laughs> so I'm sure I didn't help our team constantly getting disoriented. There were so many times where I would be like, see an enemy like Nacho and he'd be like, oh God, if he even hits me once, I'm going to die. And so I try running and I'm thinking I'm going to run into a hallway and have some cover to escape. And I turn the corner and it's just an empty cul-de-sac. And I turn around and I'm just, it's like fish in a barrel and it's over. I've never ran with Maxi is playing with both of you guys. Well, I've only played with Maxi twice so far, so it hasn't exactly been a super common thing. But yeah, that would be fun to play all at once. I think we would have a, a great time. Hopefully by then... I will actually know the buttons and I won't be nearly as much of a liability to the whole team. <laughs> Hopefully we won't be playing with maxi skill level players who just <laughs> kill us incessantly. They must see us and be like, oh my goodness, they're running. And like, I could, I could only imagine the people looked at me and I can, I imagine Maxi probably watched, rewatched the footage of that. He's like, 
what on earth is Seraph doing here? Because there were times I'm just running in circles trying to figure out where I am. <laughs> you believe it, you guys? I'm sussed out, right? <laughs> Uh, we definitely have to do that. That definitely sounds like a plan. Uh, we're rookies versus gold hat player. Yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> I hope we did good enough. I felt bad. I'm thinking like, oh my goodness. Because I know I was totally, I was the second time I ever played. I don't even know how my own abilities work, let alone what the maps layout are or, or anything else like that. But nonetheless, hanging out with you guys was fun. Uh, so I still had fun in spite of the, the poor quality of, of gaming on my part. Uh, so yeah, definitely, sorry, I'm Ghosty. We'll definitely have to have to do some Overwatch fun. If it's a quick play, it's all good. Play it for the memes. That's right. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm sure they're actually. You know what? If Maxi, oh, you know what? I should have just recorded it on OBS, even if I wasn't streaming it, because there were a couple of those that really would be good for memes. Like that moment when you think you've escaped and it's just a brick wall, and it's just, oh no, I'm dead, <laughs> and you just you just know it's over. So, uh, <laughs> so this game Battletech that we're playing tonight, it's going to be, uh, it, it is a, a war fighting game, but it's more of a tactical time, uh, turn-based game. It's very strategic. And this one, I actually know how to play. At least I hope I know how to play it. Hopefully I'm not jinxing myself and die and we die left and right. Um, hopefully we'll have ourselves a nice bit of gaming tonight. We should actually complete the story mode tonight. We are on the precipice of the end of the story. So very, very, very abridged TLDR quick summary up until this point. We are the leader of a mercenary company called Angels Holocaust. And we are uh, the basically we work for Lady Arano, Kamea, Kamea Arano, originally a tabletop game. Yes, absolutely. Originally a tabletop game. And um, this is actually the most faithful game of the tabletop. Uh, oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. It's. It's it's nice it's 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 nice. Actually, I had these uh, lights. I was originally going to put them up on my kitchen, and then I very quickly realized I didn't have the logistics for it. So I went, "What on earth am I going to do with that?" And so I just kind of strung them up on here, uh, just kind of really quick. One of these days, I'm actually going to reconnect my keyboard and start playing again. That should be really fun. And uh, what I really need to do is connect it to my computer. So I could kind of start playing on stream. I think that would be pretty neat to do like a like a Seraph learns songs uh, and tries to sing <laughs> and, and tries to sing. But who knows if my mic is set up correctly and I'm all over the place because I haven't warmed up. I think I went through four or five different keys there <laughs> or octaves rather. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, music stream. Yes. Uh <laughs> But uh, I'm I'm nowhere near as good as uh, as Kara is. Uh, but yeah, nonetheless, I think it would be fun. So yes, uh, BattleTech, BattleTech, and um, so we've we work for her. And Lady Kameo is trying to get her throne back from her uncle, who usurped the throne because he thought that the Oregon Reach needed a strong leader, and he apparently thinks tyranny is uh, strength. And fortunately, uh, I still need to ask Kara for that song he wrote for me. Ooh, he wrote a song for you? Yeah, I'll, I'll try and uh, badger him. I'll be seeing him on May 18th when he plays at Hard Rock down the street. So me and Freakbot are going to go. And um, assuming I get cleared to drink uh, this Thursday when I go in for my next post-op, uh, I'll just take an Uber down there and have myself a good time. <laughs> Metal song, nice. <laughs> oh man i still have the instrumentals of my of my band stuff uh, sitting around my hard drive somewhere i need to dig those up at some point i've been trying to look crazy too. he lagging <laughs> well i i'm pretty sure i get the sense that he's also kind of like me he's uh yeah i'm so i'm not in a band anymore funny story about the band we were doing auditions and um <laughs> it's like totally music like I, it's it's so funny right this is like total Hollywood kind of nonsense. So we were doing auditions for a new drummer. And so this drummer shows up. We get a couple of drummers. And one of the drummers uh, somehow managed to convince the others that they should fire me. So at his audition, the band fired me at his audition. And uh, it's one of those like really ridiculous things of like, I walked out of that and I'm like, did, 
did that just, and pardon my French, but did, did that just fucking happen? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I'm in the parking lot and just disbelief. I had to laugh because at that point it was just so outlandish. And right, how does that happen? It was so, <laughs> that's music, baby. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it, that was very, very funny. Um, and it, and it ended up, uh, karma ended up biting them. So I ended up after that, that's when I uh, got into my PhD program and because at that point I had time to do it. And um, so that it, it worked out for me. And uh, that particular drummer ended up sabotaging my old band and they ended up completely breaking up. And uh, yeah, so uh, they they chose poorly, I think. <laughs> uh, but I'm still friends with those guys. Yeah, they 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 knew they knew they made a mistake. Um, so yeah, I'm still, I'm still friends with them. Uh, they're, they are cool guys though. They were dumb in that moment. Um, so that's unfortunate, but, uh, it is what it is. Um, so yeah, I mean, who knows, maybe someday, uh, I'd get into back into a band again. Um, but, uh, my old guitarist, every so often we talk about recollaborating, uh, for certain stuff because he wants to, um, he wants to do a cover and up ice earth song called, uh, watching over me. And, um, so anyway, one of these days we'll, we'll actually get together and we'll, we'll do that. So, uh, I just need to have him re-record the acoustic parts, uh, form a band with Kara, Ghosty and Freak Fire, right? You know, I don't know that would, that sounds awesome. I wonder what instrument Freak Bot would play. So, uh, so we could probably teach Freak Bot bass for the most part, nobody really listens to bass, so he could be on bass. <laughs> that would probably be pretty easy if he's never picked up an instrument before. I will join. You know what? We need that. And we also need some cowbell. <laughs> Triangle and cowbell. I don't know if you've ever seen the Saturday Night Light uh, skit with Christopher Walken and uh, need more cowbell. Yes. Yay. <laughs> I got a fever for some cowbell. <sighs> I still can't believe Christopher Walken was going to be in Star Wars. Can you imagine? He chewy. Warp speed, <laughs> triangle cowbell and tambourine. That's right. But, uh, oh my goodness. So, <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, so we're having fun already. That's the most important part of a stream. Tangents from Battletech. Yes, so the recap from Battletech in between. I don't even know how we got. Oh, right, right. We were talking about the setup and the keyboard. That was my fault. I, cause I started talking about the keyboard. So I'll, I, I, I take, I'll, I'll wear, I'll take that one on the chin. That was, that was, that was me. Uh, but regardless, uh, so we are a mercenary company that primarily works for Lady Kamea. And we take, uh, we've been taking on a bunch of missions as she looks to take back the Oregon reach from the Oregon directorate. And why don't they didn't just call it an Oregon dictatorship unless they realize the optics of it. And so uh, we've uh, pretty much been along for the ride. At one point, we discovered a very ancient Star League, because uh, in this universe, Star League, the Star League was a um, confederation of all the various states, and it was the pinnacle of human civilization. Well, in the Civil War that followed, a lot of technology was lost, and so the newer stuff is not as good as the old stuff. So we found this really ancient treasure trove of really advanced old mechs uh, that are so much better than the stuff that's made now. and. Uh, but we and we managed to stop the Torian Conquer dot. Again, we're doing a very, very abridged version. If you've been watching the stream, you know pretty much know all these details. But um, essentially, Director Espinoza manipulated things behind the scenes to get a neighboring state called the Torian Conquer dot involved in the conflict on his behalf. Well, we found evidence of that meddling. Essentially, what that meddling was was he faked a chemical attack on uh, a Torian city essentially blaming it on the other uh, state next door, the Federated Sons. And so once that duplicity was exposed, essentially Director Espinosa has now been labeled a enemy of the Torian Concordat state. Uh, Protector Calderon is quite, you found Old Max, Old Maxi? <laughs> old Max, uh, Battle Max, Old Battle Max. <laughs> and... Um, and so that was what happened last stream is we exposed that and the Torian Concordat is now out of the war and now it's just Lady Arano against her uncle. And pretty much the game's over. Uh, like, basically, we've split the Oregon Directorate in two and so now there's the core worlds of Cormorid, Cor Coromadir and a few others on the more eastern part. 
but any rational actor, if this were like a real setting, like an actual D and D, or rather uh, like an actual BattleTech RPG that we were playing out on tabletop, this would be the moment where any rational actor would be like, "All right, it's time to sue for peace. I surrender." But this guy's not going to do that. We're going to have to force it, and without any further ado, we'll fire up the game here, and we will get kind of started, and we're going to kind of take a look and get a resummation of events here as we continue to uh and i've always been very active in chat so feel free to be as talkative or lurk to your heart's content force old maxi <laughs> see see i bet you there's a good pun in there that i could have named my mercenary company kind of like where maxi uh did the uh serum uh fan club for uh for fifa i should have done something like this Oh, oh, we could have been Mad Maxi. Ah, uh, that would have been that would have been perfect. <laughs> next time, next time we'll do Mad Maxi. That'll be awesome. I know that was so ridiculous. That was actually my introduction to Maxi's stream too. I was just like, okay, I don't know what's going on, but this is awesome. <laughs> I was very surprised how uh, how accurate he got some of the likenesses. I remember seeing uh, Kara, and I'm like, oh my god, that's like spot on. I had no idea that that game would uh, allow you that degree of granular customization. If, if and if not, Max, was just really good at it. Yeah, it was it was it was fun times, especially with Maxie's Maxie's uh, color commentary. <laughs> it was the best. <laughs> Pretty much I did too. Super tall and bold. <laughs> bold. It's from, okay, so let's take a quick look here. All right, let's take a look at our mechs here. Here's our Highlander. This is our best mech. And this is one of our Star League mechs. It's a jump capable assault mech, 90 tons of decimation. We've got a rangefinder that allows us to see further away and target things further away. We've got our gauze rifle, We've got double heat sinks. And so for the most part, you've got three tiers of lasers. You've got your large lasers, you got your medium lasers, you got your small lasers, and then you've got your, so those are your standard variants. And then you've got two other lost tech variants. Here's your ER version of all of those things. Uh, so we've got extended range versions of all of these to expand our range. So a gauze rifle is a, essentially a small railgun. It's a magnetic charge where you've got a metallic ammunition shell, solid, just a solid slug, and there are two magnetic rails and it accelerates that magnetic slug at high speeds and fires it out. So anytime you ever see a gauze cannon or a gauze rifle in any kind of science fiction setting, that's what that is. And um, it's, it's kind of interchangeable with a railgun. It is awesome in Battletech. I mean, generally speaking, for the most part, a gauze weapon in any kind of sci-fi setting. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, you wouldn't even see the projectile. Now we get it as projectile animation, but in lore, I don't think you can even see the projectile because it's hurled at supersonic speed. Uh, magnetic charge by polarity, there we go. Um, and so it ends up being a very, very potent weapon, and it certainly is in the Battletech universe. It's got extreme range. It does a lot of damage. It doesn't weigh a whole lot. So it's pretty much better in every way than the closest comparable thing, which would be an Auto Cannon 20. And the Auto Cannon 20 does technically more damage, but the range on the AC 20 is so much less that the gauze rifle is objectively better in every conceivable way. And the gauze ammo doesn't explode because it's just a solid cape. Uh, it's just a solid slug. So if this gets hit, and gets hit with a critical hit, it won't explode. Most ammunition in this game, like for example, down here, we've got an SRM, which stands for short range missile. And then we've got SRM ammo. So if uh, that SRM ammo takes a critical hit, it will explode and it will take the actual location with it. Uh, it's it's very destructive. <laughs> yes, SRM. <laughs> We were, we were, I think, yeah, we were talking about that in a, in a previous stream. Yes, <laughs> so that's the Sarah missile. 
and then you've got your long range missile or LRM. Uh, and yeah, any type of ammunition you have to worry about that, where if uh, if ammo gets hit, it could potentially explode and ammo explosions are terrible. And uh, so anyway, we've got an LRM 15, we've got an SRM 6 in this, and we've got a heat exchanger to help manage heat because heat is a one of those resources that we have to manage because uh, this game in particular manages things like heat. If your components overheat, it will do damage to the mech and you might have to worry about the mech's automatic safeguards initiating a shutdown. And what you don't want to do in this game is have your mech shut down from heat. That is almost certainly a recipe for disaster. Now, sometimes you might make a tactical decision. So um, someone else who tends to frequent my chat section, he might be lurking at this point, but uh, Phoenix Nade, he made a mech in Mech Warrior Online that I think had something ridiculous, like six PPCs or something. Of, I, I, at some point, I'll have to either once he's in chat, I'll, I'll, I'll re-ask him what that particular build was. But every time he did an alpha strike with it, and a, oh, a PPC stands for a particle projection cannon. It's essentially a cannon in this universe that fires a bolt of lightning. It's awesome, but it also generates a lot of heat. And so he had six of these things on like a rifleman or something absurd. And so if you alpha strike and alpha strike is firing everything, that thing generated so much heat, it automatically shot. It is awesome. It is awesome. And uh, so yeah, his mech would shut down automatically. And he did the math. If he fired, he only had three, three shots with it. And each time it would shut down. And after he shot it for the third time, his mech would explode because the engine would take so much damage, it would have a core explosion. <laughs> it was the most ridiculous build ever. But if he hit something else with it, that mech died. So his attitude was, I'll die, but I will destroy three mechs. That makes me a that makes me a valuable contributor on any team. And it was just like, I can't, I can't dispute this logic. But it was one of the most ridiculous builds I've ever heard of. But that was one of the beautiful parts of this game is not only is there an actual battlefield component to it, and I'm and I'm so glad Saramy asked the question because otherwise I wouldn't have had this I wouldn't even have to think of this particular conversation for this end game stream portion. But that is one of the best things I like about this game in this universe is not only do you have to have the actual uh, you get the fun of the strategic tactical command and the very decisions that end up leading to victory in a battlefield. But you also have moments like this where you can go in here and you can come up with builds like that and you have a complete control over I mean uh, up until you don't you can't so you can't ta uh, modify the engine that's in here and we can't modify things like you can in tabletop as far as like endo steel endo steel skeleton or switching out the type of armor it has uh ferrofibrous or all of those types of things but yeah absolutely you have we can modify the ever living heck out of this thing. We added an arm uh, mod, which weighs one ton. So each of these, you can even see, um, yep, I'm pointing, there we go. Now I'm pointing in the right direction. Uh, over there where it says arm mod and it says tonnage one, and that's the weight of it and slots. So this, this component here weighs one ton and it takes up five various slots. And so you work within the confines of the game to come up with builds that make sense. If I found a, Actually, so that way that's that's two slots. So unfortunately, I can't slot these two in here unless I found another place to put. Yeah, no, I can't. I have no other place I could put that SRM six. So at this point, I don't know how I would be able to put those in here. But this uh, this is an improved gyro, and uh, essentially what this does this plus three hit defense is it adds a plus three penalty to an enemy to hit this mech. So just the fact that it has a better gyro means the mech is harder to hit. And it's one of the nice parts of, of this. I could also take out the jump jets and remove its jump ability if I instead wanted, you know, more heat sinks or maybe wanted to add on a little more armor. Every time I hear one ton, my brain goes wonton. Uh, <laughs> oh, wonton. It's been so long since I've had wonton soup. Now I want wonton soups. So heat sinks. So you've got your thing. So basically, so for example, let us go to our ER medium laser. This does 45 damage on a hit, but it also generates 20 heat every time it fires. 
And so the mech's engine has a number of built-in heat sinks to it already. But every turn, you might generate a certain amount of heat depending on what you fire or you don't fire. Oh, I thank you, Resplendent Bot. I'm so glad the bot works. And at the same time, you've got a certain number of heat sinks, like for example, this heat sink, which is a double heat sink, that each one of these particular improved heat sinks reduces the heat that turn by six. So at the end of the turn, when the heat cycles, each of these heat sinks will reduce my total accumulated heat. So I've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. So six times five, 30. Uh, the heat sinks alone will take away 30 heat from the various uh, heat plus whatever the engine is, is uh, sinking. And that ends up being part of the part of how this whole thing works. Once we actually get into a fight, I'll, it'll be much more clear of how that works. I probably didn't explain that uh, except very, very early on. But even then, I may not have actually explained that. And now I'm wishing I had done that in the first stream if I didn't. So yes, it absolutely is a cooler. It, it is, that is exactly what it is. It's a cooler. It is, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> uh, quite, quite right. And so, uh, yeah, the, essentially these are bigger heat sinks. So you've got, uh, do I not have any other heat sinks? Oh, there we go. Okay, so here are the standard heat sink, and I can't do this because my mech is now overweight, but this is the standard heat sink. They don't take up all that much space but these only reduce the heat by three. These weigh the same amount, but they just take up much more space. So it weighs the same, but because it's slightly bigger, it actually has more heat dissipation, just like a real heat sink. Uh, actually, I've got a real heat sink. Where's my real heat sink? Leave it to Seraph to have a closet full of computer components. So, uh, so essentially, each of these is this, just a nice little heat sink. This is what I had on my previous graphics card to help vent some of the extreme heat that uh, my 3090 used to generate because the memory controller on it was absolutely ridiculous and it generated way too much. So here's the thermal tape. I just kept the thermal tape on there at some point. Oh yeah, these things are real things. Um, so yeah, the heat sink in this universe is a little more elaborate than this, but essentially that's what you're dealing with. And you're essentially just dealing with a metal plate with metal fins and it just radiates and it just radiates heat off of it. Woohoo! Probably way more, way more, way more of an explanation than it's probably necessary, but we're having fun here. And uh, you put, I did put that on my old GPU uh, because my old GPU, the memory, um, the memory interconnects, they just generated so much heat on the back plate. So even with it being water cooled, so the GPU part of it didn't really, I think the temps would top out at like 70 degrees on that, which is still pretty warm for a GPU, but it's not that crazy. The problem is my VRAM would get really, really hot. And it was specifically the VRAM sensor that was on the back of the GPU or yeah, on the back of the GPU. So between that and the back plate, it was just cooking itself. So I put that heatsink on my back plate and all of a sudden, just for there being a, a chassis fan right here, blowing air over that heatsink, that reduced my temperatures uh, on that uh, on that particular VRAM um, bus. It's probably not the right word for it, but that side, the VRAM on that side, uh, it was like a 15 degrees Celsius difference. It, it was it was significant just by adding that heatsink with uh, with the thermal tape uh, on top of it. So yeah, no problem. Uh, I mean, so my day job is computer tech support. So I'm, I'm around computers all the time. I'm constantly building them. I'm constantly fixing them and, uh, and whatnot. So I'm, I'm more than happy to uh, always explain in detail. I, I have fun doing that in any event. So this is our Highlander and this is our Atlas. This was a brainchild of Alexander Kerensky which uh, he's one of the most famous characters in the lore. He was a Star League general, so we're talking two, 300 years uh, past the point of the present of this game. And we've got, you know, so here I don't have any of the, the advanced stuff in it. Uh, I just have a couple of normal heat sinks. We've just got normal medium lasers. This is not, well, we've got an ultra auto cannon 20. So this is an AC, this is an auto cannon, but every turn that I fire it, it fires twice. So it does a lot of damage. <laughs> this thing, 
This thing will hurt a lot. This thing will just blow holes into mechs. It's awesome. And, uh, and this thing is actually a hundred tons. This is a lumbering monstrosity and it's terrifying if you have to face one. Uh, we're repairing our, we're upgrading our Starly Warhammer that we just bought. We've got an archer for, uh, for long range LRM support. So this thing's got two LRM 20s on it. So this thing fires 40 LRMs per turn. It has a targeting computer that we managed to find at, uh, during our many uh, various mercenary shenanigans and uh, various odd jobs. So we managed to pick this up on one of our side quests. And that essentially just makes more of the missiles hit. So in tabletop, what you do is when you fire an LRM at an enemy and you roll the hit and you roll and you're just rolling two. Uh, uh, I think you're rolling 2d6. Uh, yeah, you're rolling 2d6 to see if you hit. And if you hit, then you uh, roll either a d6 or a, I think you roll 2d6 again. Yeah, you roll 2d6 again and you consult a chart and it shows what percentage of the LRMs you hit. So one of the worst things about LRMs, at least in tabletop and why I didn't really like them all that much is because you can get a hit with say something like an LRM 20 and then roll snake eyes. And it turns out only two of your missiles out of the 20 spread hit. And it was ridiculous, I hated that. Although if you rolled a 12, all 20 hit. Usually you got somewhere in the middle where you're talking like 10 to 12 missiles typically hit, but you're for the most part bang for buck. Most of your LRMs are missing all the time. But in this game with this targeting computer, which improves the scale of the spread. Now, all of a sudden, most of the time, 18, 19, 20 missiles are hitting. And yeah, this thing with this targeting computer, this archer does uh, a lot. <laughs> it does a lot of damage. And so let's take a quick look at what we're doing here. I think we're up to, ah, uh, yes. So we could do Koromordir now, um, but I think we should do a warm up first. Let's get, let's get started here. Let's take a look. These are pirates. Uh, yeah, let's, let's do a stubborn surrender here. Let's wrap up some of these uh, Torians that were still here that maybe didn't get the memo. And we got a Tundra environment. So Tundra is good for mechs because if it's cold, our heat sinks are a lot more effective. Let's negotiate that. We're going to take a mission. We are working for the Arana Restoration. We're going to go against the Torian Concordat. We can adjust this a little bit, but I like I like this. We're going to take we're going to get half a million sea bills and we'll still get some mech salvage. Let's do this and then let's end the game. Is there anybody else we want to take with us or are we just going to go with our A team here? I like going with our A team. Yeah, we're going to go with the A team. And we also have a standard non-Star League Highlander over here that we could bring with us if we so chose. Yeah, we'll go. We'll bring this Cyclops. We'll let that Warhammer stay. You know what? Actually, let's just bring this Highlander. In here. Let's do that instead. <laughs> ah, tasty, tasty, sugary Coca-Cola. Although now I've finished it. So now I'm going to be thirsty for water in a couple minutes. Oh, and now I found out why the Twitch follower goals are always uh, so off on my uh, every time I check it, why it's always a little lower. Because every time we ban one of the uh, spam bops, Ghosty, uh, <laughs> it doesn't actually subtract from the follower goal, but it subtracts on the affiliate tracking. So, I mean, it, it goes, it, it kind of goes, but it, it makes sense. So I've just adjusted the follower goal to not account for the fake followers for people trying to. <laughs> All right, I'll have to go downstairs and grab some water. But thank you, Sarah. I appreciate that. That is the best redemption so far. Uh, I love that. So let's begin this mission. And yeah, Come I'm going to go downstairs really quick because that's a fantastic idea. I am definitely going to need water. Yay, water. I'll be right back.
Yay, water! Yeah, yeah, bots definitely get subtracted. <laughs> Although I don't know if Twitch can tell the difference. But yeah, when you, hey, Deep Fry, how are you, my friend? Welcome, welcome. We're, we're pretty much just, we're, we're just getting started here. <laughs> but we're, we're clearly having a good time. <laughs> Looks like we found our targets, Commander. Move forward and clear them out. Oh, we've got a, um, that looks like a trebuchet. Be careful, these specs may be old and poorly maintained, but they could still kill you. Ready for action, Commander. Let's do this. So we're just gonna wait. Yeah, we're we're not gonna mess around. Actually, let's jump. That way we're engaging jump jets. We see them already? Wow, we can't see them already. That's fine. We'll just slowly advance. Moving out. Lumber forward. And we're just about to start the actual game, yeah. Yeah, Seraph uh, certainly um, is not setting any kind of speed road. records for this game. <laughs> so, <laughs> you guys will really appreciate this. You've seen me play Oath of Filgana. I think all of you have seen me play Oath of Filgana a bunch of times. Well, there is an achievement for beating that game in under five hours. Now, I think I'm on my third stream of that game now. And each one has been like three or four hours. And I'm just looking at that. And I'm going like, how the hell can anyone beat this game in under five hours? Right? Right? I'm, I'll be lucky if I beat that game in under, at this rate, 20. Because we, we're still in the Elder Mountains. And which I always call Mount Seco. Um, but it's not. For Oath of Felgana, it's the Elder Mountains. Mount Seco is that region in um in the original turbo graphics version and so yeah we're just gonna yeah we'll advance here why not on my way probably should be explaining more about what i'm doing and why but <laughs> but yeah that, i thought that was just absolutely ludicrous uh to be able to complete that game ah oh, it's a quick no draw sweat. you I think you're just gonna back up. No, we'll we'll have you back up ever so slightly. Confirm. Get some high ground, and you're gonna fire from all the way over there. Perfect. Uh, so yeah, and also when I was looking through the achievements, I remembered some of the things I had forgotten to do. There are two side quests that uh, that I'll need to do when we first start that. So we're still, but yeah, point being, we're in the Elder Mountains. We still have to finish the Elder Mountains. There's still some other backtracking to do. And then there's Valestine Castle. And I'll be lucky to get through Valestine Castle in two streams, let alone one. So I'm thinking I probably have 10 hours of that game still ahead of me to do all of that in under five. I don't know. Maybe if I decide it. So here's something I probably possibly could do. Right Let's have Medusa go. So, okay, so the initiative system again, just for the sake of being complete, uh, just for the sake of uh, going over it really quick, you've got your initiative phases. So you got your uh, light mech phase, uh, your medium mech phase, your heavy mech phase, and then your assault mech phase. And so depending on the weight of your mech depending, depends on how quickly you get to go. So the lighter the mech, the quicker you get to go. It, it's, it gives you a tactical advantage for at least being undersized. It's part of the game balance of the game. Uh, multiple times I just run through the quest to finish it. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. No doubt, Saram. Uh, <laughs> just, uh, you've got, yeah, uh, number one, you gotta be really familiar with it, but yeah, there's obviously no messing around either. And that also means you're probably not farming for XP, so you're beating those bosses pretty much the first or second attempt each time. And I'm like, damn, that just sounds crazy to me. Uh, yep, and as you can see, we're hitting 95% on each of these. So this quick draw is going to hate life in a second. And we're going to generate ever so slight. This is our heat meter, but we're we're not going to we're generating. We're basically heat neutral at this point. So the amount of heat that the LRMs are generating is equal to the amount of heat that the mech can sink in a Tundra environment. So we're we're going pretty well in, in that mech. All right, so now we've got to the uh, heavy phase here. But because this particular character 
as master tactician, even though I'm in an assault mech, I'm still going to go in fa in the heavy phase. So I'm going to jump up here, and we're going to really pick on this quick draw. That quick draw is a heavy mech, and it's jump capable. But ooh, we got somebody else too over here. Ah, we've got an enforcer. Okay, so and if we right click, we could get some information. So this enforcer has an AC-10, a large laser, and a small laser. This quick draw has four medium lasers, an LRM-10, and an SRM-4. And our trebuchet here is an interesting variant. It's the 7K. So instead of having a crap ton of LRMs, um, it has an AC-5, a particle projection cannon, that lightning cannon, and an SRM-2. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so the environment totally has an effect on the battlefield. So a Tundra environment, your heat sinks are a lot better. Our mechs uh, basically won't generate as much heat. Um, it's more accurate to say the heat sinks work better, but it suffice it to say it's it's easier to explain that um, your just your mechs run a lot cooler in tundra environments. If we were in the desert, our heat sinks work less effectively, and it's super easy for mechs to overheat in the desert. So yeah, the different environments definitely make a difference. And sometimes I've had situations where if I take a look at the mech environment. I'll just look at the mechs and be like, okay, well, I can't bring that mech into a desert environment. It will just cook itself and it will actually affect my mech selection of what I bring down. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, and that's part of the fun is, um, taking all of these various things into account. It, it's a pretty detail. Oh, I missed with the gauze rifle. That's so sad. Oh crap, that's a Battlemaster. So that's an assault mech, and that could hurt us a lot. But for the most part, he missed. For uh, mostly, he missed because, again, that mech has a really good gyro on it. Yeah, Gauze went on a tangent too, yeah. Uh, I wish that Gauze didn't go on a tangent. I'm glad we went on our tangent. I wish that Gauze had stayed on target. So this mech that I'm highlighting, also, there are a couple of icons next to it. There's that forest icon. Essentially, it means I take 20% less damage. And the icon next to it means that the pilot has bulwark, which also adds a little extra defense, which means I take less damage. And the little pips next to that, the little, um, essentially what looks like a uh, greater than sign, each one of those uh, pips that adds to it is the mech's evasion and each one of those adds a penalty to hit it so the faster your mechs are moving or the more your mechs are moving in the sense the harder they are to hit and so yeah that was it, that's one of the benefits of having a fast moving so. mech so i'm gonna lumber forward and yeah i'm gonna only be able to fire on that but actually this atlas is pretty much all short range firepower but i am gonna have this advance and the even though confirmed. I'm not going to be able to do much damage to that quick draw. I'm still going to fire at it because each of each time you fire an enemy mech like this right now, that quick draw has three evasion pips. I'm going to fire at it with my LRM 20 and one of those evasion pips is going to get stripped off. Ooh, that was actually better. If you do a lot of stability damage to a mech, it can get unsteady and lose all of its evasion. And that's what happened here. That is not very common but it's nice when it happens. I hear ya. So let's jump. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, this is gonna hurt. So yeah, that particle projection cannon, the cannon that fires lightning, you're about to see it. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna pick on this quick draw. Take this. Oh, we didn't really see it very well. Oh, we blew off its right torso though. I think we knocked yeah. that mech over. Yep, we did knock the mech over. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll have more chances to see that cannon. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, when it went in for the cinematic view, the Highlander was right in the way. We might see it from this thing. Yep. But the bolt of lightning missed. <laughs> yeah, the mech itself blocked the view. That was so lame. <laughs> Damage. But that's all right. We saw it with the trebuchet there. Nothing, you hear me? <laughs> and I love glitches smack talk. Uh, yes, let's finish off that quick draw. Yeah, we're just going to go for the kill here. Let's finish off the quick draw. So anytime a mech is knocked down, you can target the location. 
Yeah, Highlander needs to be Lowlander. Gotcha. Granted, it's Lowrider, but, you know, close enough. <laughs> yeah, they're firing at the Highlander a lot, and they're missing it a lot. Now I get to sh now I get to go again. I okay. I think I'm just gonna jump laterally or laterally for a little extra. Yeah, we're gonna do that. I'm just gonna jump over here. I'm gonna jump away from that battle master. I want to take care of these things first, and then we'll deal with this 85 ton battle master. So for now, let's do a precision strike, and let's get greedy. We're gonna go for the head here. Because if we hit the head with the gauze cannon, it's over. Nope. Oh man, we missed the we missed with the gauze again. Oh well. We still did a lot of damage to that trebuchet. It was worth it. I haven't hit with the gauze cannon once this battle. That's been that's bad luck. Oh. See, there's another PPC. Um, it's just the name of the mech. So, for example, this is a Highlander, and above it, it shows the actual pilot's name. So this is piloted by Renegade. And this one is another Highlander. This one's being piloted by Glitch. And so we've got two Highlanders here, and we've also got an Atlas, which is being piloted by Behemoth. And so this is a trebuchet, and it tells me the type of pilot. This is being piloted by a Brawler. And this is being piloted by a flanker. And it's basically a flanker and brawler kind of gives me an idea of what the AI that's controlling that mech or the pilot, what class they are and what they're what they're good at. So this one is going to be better as a frontline pilot, like essentially taking damage and stuff. If it had cover, it would take less damage. This one's good. It's like a harasser moving around. So a battle master uh, and this enforcer is a medium mech and I want to say the enforcer is 55 tons the enforcer might be 50 tons it's not going to actually tell me what the mech's weight is on this loadout and the trebuchet is something similar it's uh it's a medium mech it's around 50 I think it's I think the trebuchet is 50 tons and I think the enforcer is 55 but the battle master is 85 tons so it's just it's it's on par with, uh, it's kind of on par with one of my Highlanders, although the Highlander is 90 tons versus it's 85. So either one of my Highlanders outclasses it, but uh, it's just, it's a more, it's a more dangerous threat. Yes, bigger is definitely stronger because the more it weighs, the more weapons and armor that it has. That is exactly right. It is a bigger slash stronger mech. <laughs> In this case, both. Ooh, but now we're in range of this Atlas. So a 100 ton mech versus a 50 ton mech. Yeah, no problem. Glad to, feel free. Anytime you ever have a question, feel free to, feel free to ask. I love explaining stuff. This auto cannon may just blow this mech apart. Let's find out what happens. Roger. <laughs> so that was very bad for the enemy pilot <laughs> in many many ways <laughs> so much was happening there it was hard to narrate in real time so i blew off its leg that immediately knocked it down we blew off its torso that injured its pilot there was an ammo explosion that destroyed a location in and of itself <laughs> What and yeah, the, the rest of that mech, it, it didn't, it, it just, that, um, yeah, um, that, that was it. That was all she wrote. <laughs> that was glorious. Yeah, poor guy. <laughs> oh, man. So I think we'll just do a standard fire here. Now, one of the interesting things also that I do a lot, and I've, I've explained this in previous streams, but I do like to reiterate it. Uh, for the mech, you see this circle right below the mech. There are four firing arcs, essentially. And so when you're aiming at one of these side arcs, 
essentially all that damage is going to be clustered on one side of the mech. And so one strategy, especially early on when your pilots aren't very good, is to align your entire lance or as many of your pilots as possible. So you're only dealing damage on one side of the mech. So you don't have to do damage to the entire thing. You can just get the mech out of commission by getting its engine or core out of uh, out of commission earlier. And you don't even have to do damage to like half the mech. And so, yeah, that's what we're going to do here. We're going to concentrate our fire on this side. And away we go. Particle projection cannon, fire! Commencing alpha strike! Not bad. Yeah, we got a nice turn. Now they're gonna... Oh, you actually hit me that time. Oh, wow. You hit me twice. Minor damage, Commander. Nothing to see here. <laughs> Glitch is definitely my favorite pilot. No, no question. Yep. Oh, uh, okay. So one of the advantages of precision strike right now, we're only doing 65 points, 65% uh, damage. I'm going to do precision strike. I'm going to use part of my resolve pool here to use one of my special abilities. And we're going to do precision strike. And instead, now we're doing 85% with our missiles and we can target a location and we're going to target its core. Got it. That's a lot of missiles. <laughs> that is a lot of missiles. Go. Goodbye, mech. All right. So we've already destroyed three out of four mechs here, and we only got one left. So suffice it to say, this battle is going well. And there's our battle master. He's shown up. Oh, hit me with a PPC, though. That sucks. One of the other effects of getting hit with a particle projection cannon is not only does it is it lightning and it looks awesome. But if it hits you, the bolt of lightning will scramble your sensors a little bit. It actually makes it harder for you to hit them. So that part's kind of lame. When it happens to me, it's awesome when I do it to them, though. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're going to control our facing and go this way. Engaging jump, jets. jump. And since I've got the resolve, I'm going to do vigilance. And what essentially that does is it gives me cover even when I'm not in cover. And next turn, I'll go one initiative phase earlier. Ooh, the Big Mac. Yes. Yeah, let's just fire. Engaging target. There we go. The guy's rifle hit that time. Glitch. Waiting on you, Commander. Yeah, we'll just fire. We'll just stand put and I'm just going to fire these. We're going to cool off a little bit because I was generating way too much heat. So I'm going to stay at a distance here and just fire the PPC and the LRM and just cool off a little fire. And that's what it means by its sensors impaired. Yes, Commander. Yeah. Behemoth, on the other hand, I'm just going to walk right up to this thing like a boss. I copy. <laughs> Finally, a crew view on the God's rifle, right? And we're going to precision strike it to improve our chances to hit. And I'm going to go for the headshot because uh, we got two shots at this and this should be funny. And we got its head. We just blew its head clean off. <laughs> nice expedited end to that. Excellent work, Commander. The zone is clean. The board is green. Let's go home. <laughs> Mission successful. And the nice part is when you do that, if you can, if you get a head hit like that, you get much more salvage because more of the mech is intact for you to take from the battlefield. So I will be doing that. And here's our post operations here. Uh, we only got token damage. So we basically didn't take really any damage and all my pilots are maxed out. So their XP really doesn't matter. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I love your emoticons. They're so awesome. So we got three pieces of Battlemaster salvage. We got a couple of other things. Let's see. Let's take a look and see if there's any good lost tech. Ooh, there's a good medium laser in there. But I don't think so. I think we're just going to take the Battlemaster salvage. And let's see if the game is nice enough to give me one more piece of Battlemaster salvage. It did! Yes, it's random what else it gives you. So we just got... With that Battlemaster, we just took right off there. You have to spend XP or tokens or anything when your mechs are damaged. So the, the XP is for pilots 
and I will I could show you what that looks like really fast. I don't think I don't think any of my other pilots have XP to spend, but um that mech you wanted, But when mechs are damaged was... after battle, that's what the mech bay is for. Oh, and he thinks we even have to do some mech repairs. Let's take a look what he's talking about. Oh, he's talking about the Warhammer. So this Warhammer, it's in the shop. We're actually upgrading it right now. And so that's in progress. That's why we can't use this in a uh, in a fight right now. We've got three days till that's done. We're also upgrading the entire ship. Uh, and that's going to be done in 12 days. And then we got to pay our bills in 16 days. So over here in the barracks, over in Mech Warriors, here is our stable of pilots. And so here's our primary um, pilot. And yeah, everything is maxed out. So let's go with a pilot that I've been... Mummy Bear! Waiting for orders. So good, I've got XP I could spend on her. Um, and we're going to... So you're a tactics tactician. I'm going to turn you into a pilot lancer. I think that is the best use for you. And so we just select the XP there. We spent 900. We have 50 left. Training confirmed, and confirm. Commander. We didn't bring her with us to the battle... But um, unfortunately, all the pilots that I brought, like Glitch, they're already maxed out. So I've got a, a ridiculous amount of XP. I can't spend it. I can't spend anymore. It won't let me. Right, Mummy Bear is so great. I didn't even, I didn't even generate that. This is a, this is a Kickstarter pilot. So a bunch of people that contributed to the Kickstarter. If you did a certain tier, I, I did not. I wish I had now in hindsight. Um, but they made a character for you. And so uh, this person uh, did uh, Mummy Bear, and she ended up coming up with this entire uh, backstory. And so she got to do that. It was really, yeah, I thought that was really cool. Uh, and all the Kickstarter pilots, I really like. It's the, Kickstarter, uh, the Kickstarters that contributed, they clearly put a little more effort into the pilot backstory than the developers did for a lot of the pilots. Well, they also, the developers had so many pilots to do, the Kickstarters just did one. So it makes sense that that these would be pretty well developed and, and cool. But yeah, I, I love the Kickstarter pilots. So every Kickstarter pilot has a chaos and all of the games built in uh, Ronin essentially have this symbol instead. So yeah, whenever I find a Kickstarter pilot, I, I hire them because yes, they're on. they're cool. I don't I'm think ooh, we can. Eh, same thing. huh? Well, let's uh, let's make you a gun. Mech warrior training complete. Do that. Good you, to go. you are getting closer to upgrade. Orders. I think I can upgrade you. Standing by. And this is just a random generated one who doesn't have any kind of real uh, information. This was just randomly generated by the game, which is why it doesn't have any kind of special symbol on it. I might actually dismiss this pilot. I am going to dismiss this pilot. Actually. We're going to save some money and not have not have a generated one. We're going to keep we're going to keep the Waiting awesome orders. And that's that. All right. I think uh, I think at this point we are ready to end the game. Let's go to Cormadir and stage the final assault on the throne world. Let's let's do this. Bio it's time to travel. And if I've missed any plot points or anything else like that, I'll try and rehash it as we get there. So we got 15 days of travel. Done, yeah, okay, man. our mechs are all done. We'll resume our travel. Some of the environments are really pretty and cool. And actually, this is a good point for me to explain what's going on here. So in the Battletech universe, there are a lot of... Okay, happy accidents time. I gotta, I'll gotta. i narrate this and then I'll get back to that point. Darius opens the morning meeting with a scowl on his face. We packed up new supplies a few weeks ago, and we're just now opening some of the crates of machine tools. And well, I can't believe this happened again. But Yang practically explodes from his chair. We have more frozen triple F burger meat. Do you know how hard this stuff is to come by the periphery? <laughs> Dr. Murad sighs audibly. Please tell me that the refrigeration was still operational. I don't want a repeat of last time. Oh, goodness. Don't worry, Doc. My team will take care of the goods. Yang flashes you a winning smile. What do you say, Commander? Burgers on the menu? So we've got, uh, because we built a hydroponics uh, lab, we could recreate an authentic triple F burger. Let's do that. Ah, and our morale increased by two. So an idea pops in your head. Chef, you're kind of an expert on triple F burgers. 
You think the hydroponics garden has what you need to create the real thing? Yang's face takes on the stony expression that you've come to associate with complicated refit orders. From what I've heard, this stuff is basically whale meat, so I'll have to improvise, but yes, challenge accepted. By the end of the week, Yang and his mech techs had raided the garden and retrofitted a blast furnace into a makeshift grill. Somebody even decorated the mess hall in Triple F's trademark colors. While only those who've traveled in Davian space can attest to the accuracy of the burgers, everyone agrees that they're delicious. <laughs> and when they talk about Davian space, they're talking about the Federated Suns. Uh, so navigation, real quick. Uh, star map. Star map time. <laughs> Seraph explains the Battletech universe in five minutes or less. Here's the Oregon Reach. Here's the territory that Leda, Lady Kamea has liberated. And as I said, they've cut the Doregan Directorate in half. We're on our way to the throne world now of Koromordir. This is the Torian Concordat over here. This is the Federated Sons, i.e. Davian Space. This is the Capellan Confederation, i.e. Liao territory. And the fucking Capellans. <laughs> Part of my French, but they are some of the they are some of the craziest, craziest sons of bitches of all the successor states. These guys are Looney Tunes. But in a weird way, I also respect how batshit crazy they can be on some stuff. Borgers! <laughs> Uh, this is the Free Worlds League. This is also Merrick space. So Merrick is like the house. Uh, so you almost get this like pseudo feudalistic kind of vibe, uh, even though it's space opera. So this is House Merrick. This is House Liao. And this is House Davian. Uh, and House Liao generally has a reputation for being, uh, having a, let's just so call it a chronic backstabbing disorder. And so, uh, so that's where a lot of that comes in. And this is the Magistry of Canopus. But essentially this boundary here is the edge of what's called the inner sphere. And everything past this is the periphery. So we're in this region of space called the periphery. And so the further in you go into the inner sphere, uh, at the very center of the inner sphere is Earth. And, um, and you've got the various successor states around it. And Earth, of course, used to be the uh, headquarters of the Star League. Weird as it is, the only uh, ruling power or faction, so to speak, of Earth, chronic backstabbing disorder, uh, is what we affectionately in the Battletech community called Space AT&T. So essentially, kind of picture AT&T, uh, and for any, uh, everybody outside, people outside the, uh, the U.S. know, know how AT&T kind of is for, is for, yeah, Space at &T. Okay, so good. That's a reference that works. I'm like, I'm thinking about it. I'm like, Everybody does know who AT&T is out internationally, right? <laughs> so good. Um, so picture AT&T, but, um, but they run, let's say, Rome. <laughs> and then you've got the rest of Europe that's just, you know, craziness in the Middle Ages. And that's probably a very accurate summation. AT&T runs Earth. And AT&T is actually really scary in this universe because they never lost all the blueprints for all the advanced stuff. So all of their mechs are still really, really freaking good, while everybody else is running around in junk. <laughs> so they're actually a force to be threatened with uh, in this universe. But yeah, all the communication throughout the inner sphere happens by hyper pulse generators or HPG, or you basically get HPG stations. And so, and it's run by an organization called Comstar. And so we basically call Comstar Space AT&T because that's who they are. <laughs> uh, and so yeah, Comstar is not not anybody to mess with uh, in this universe. And so yeah, very, very brief geography of space and all that. And we are right now here, going here. Woohoo, okay. <laughs> and so uh, interstellar space, the way it works in the Battletech universe is you've got jump ships. And so you've got ships that can essentially do that and they can jump from system to system, and I, I probably could go on. I could probably do like a three hour dissertation on the effects of jump capable craft, how it works, the science of it and everything else. But essentially what you end up having is hey, we've just completed those upgrades. Take a quick look at our engineering section to see what we can upgrade while I'm talking about this. Uh, I think we should definitely do that because we're going to make that money in a second. We'll still have a million sea bills left. Yep, we're going to upgrade our med bay into hospital bays. Essentially, we're gonna have doctors, facilities, 
It's expensive. It's like most of the money we have left, but uh, chance of death from incapacitating damage is 5% less likely. Chance of death from lethal damage is 5% less likely. And that is nothing to sneeze at when uh, you might potentially lose a pilot forever. And so this gives you a chance to uh, to not lose that pilot. I think it doubles the chance. I think you normally get a 5% chance to survive something. And essentially this will double uh, the chance of death of your pilots. So yeah, we're going to purchase that, that finally. It's expensive, but we're about to make a crap ton of money. I think we can, I think we can do that. And so, uh, yeah, now, now it's going to warn me that we're almost broke. <laughs> uh, but that's okay. Cause we're going to get to Colin here in a day later and it's going to be awesome. Darius is going to warn me. Yeah, we're, we're getting low on Seabills, Commander. <laughs> I see you guys keeping a careful eye on our expenses. Yeah, we're fine, Darius. We're fine. All right, Sarah, we will be here because this is going to be a while. Uh, <laughs> so we shall be here when you return. And so, uh, yeah, for the for the virtue of just explaining that real quick. Well, I go, probably don't have time to explain that. Are. But yeah, <laughs> we cut it a little short, but I knew we could. I knew we could afford it. So I'm not super worried about it. Yep, we're still going to do this. Because Coromadir is going to pay us in speed. So let's get here. All right. Um, yeah, now we've arrived. I probably don't have time to finish that spiel on how the jump systems work. I will get back to that in a minute when we have time. We've arrived at Coromadir, Commander. Ready to proceed with our current contract. Yes, we are ready to end the game. Let's do this. Parlay. In orbit. Here we go. The dictator himself, Santiago Espinoza. Kamea, welcome home. We haven't spoken face to face since your father's funeral. Strange, isn't it? For all the time we've been fighting each other, for all of our struggles, we haven't actually talked until now. Well, you haven't because you didn't want to talk. You just started shooting at us. I'm not here to talk with you, uncle. I'm here to demand your surrender. <laughs> and ain't right, Kamea. Then you'll walk away from this parlay disappointed. Did I teach you nothing, Kamea? The end game is a time for negotiation, not demands. I remember your teachings well enough, uncle. If our positions were reversed, you would attack me without hesitation or mercy. The founding houses are rallying behind me. You're outnumbered, outgunned, and you have nowhere left to turn. And aside from a single hostage, you have nothing to negotiate with. A single hostage? He's your dearest friend. Surely he means more to you than nothing. Alexander means a great deal to me, but I would sacrifice any one person, even myself, for the good of the Reach. You are defeated. Concede. I've heard your proposal. Now you hear mine. You will leave this system in my hands and solidify your power base elsewhere. I will rule Coromadir, and I will hold your friend to ensure your good behavior. You will agree to these terms, or you will die. I will die? Your words are error, uncle. You have nothing left to threaten me with. So you believed when you moved on Castle Nautilus. I think you're bluffing, and I'm willing to wager my life on it. I'll see you on the field of battle. Yes, I suppose you will. The, views, the image on the view screen cuts out. Espinosa must have terminated the call. <laughs> yeah, if he won't surrender, that's fine with me. His funeral. And it may be Alexander's as well. But there's nothing we could do about that now. We can't delay the attack. You heard my uncle's demands. He made them knowing that I'd refuse. I think that he's stalling, but I don't know what for. And that worries me. So I've decided to take the option away from him. Darius, raise the founding houses on the comms. Tell them that I'm ordering them to drop. All of our companies, our entire fleet, everything we have. As always, I will lead from the front. We're taking Coromadir, and we're doing it now. Renegade, I want you to remain at ready until I call for you. Prepare your mech warriors and wait for my signal. We are going to crush what remains of my uncle's directorate. With your company's help, I will retake the throne that was stolen from me. And come hell or high water, we will rescue Lord Madeira. I swear it on my father's name.
You should have listened to your uncle, Lady Irano. We have unfinished business, you and I. The Iberia still carries a full complement of battle mechs, plus enough firepower to level a city. And you know it's too late to withdraw your forces. When I reach Cormadir, I will drown your restoration in a sea of fire. Every dog in Arano colors will die. You took my son from me, Kamea. My hope for the future died with him. Now I'm killing yours. So yeah, stuff just got real, real quick. <laughs> Desperation play. Well, boss, things are looking pretty grim, I gotta say. But hey, at least we figured out what Espinosa's secret weapon is. Yeah, yeah, we did. <clears throat> well, that almost went down the wrong pipe. That would have been embarrassing. Ah. Uh. Thanks for that ray of sunshine, <laughs> sunshine, Yang. Did any of you see that wall behind Ostergaard? Those were burn marks, bullet holes. What looked like small arms fire. His sailors must have tried to seize the bridge. There was a mutiny attempt on the Iberia. It failed, and as unhinged as Ostergaard may have sounded, he was right. We can't withdraw our troops without the Directorate cutting them to ribbons, and we can't stop a fortress-class dropship. At least not through conventional means. Well, <laughs> You're about to give us an incredibly sketchy job, aren't you? I'm getting that feeling. <laughs> Your instincts are as sharp as ever, renegade. You're going to bring down the Iberia. <laughs> the, the what I am? <laughs> um, how exactly? The Argo isn't exactly a warship. She doesn't even carry any weapons. No, but she is carrying something that could bring down a dropship. It very nearly destroyed the Argo if memory serves. We're going to use the Lacura. And so, just as a quick flashback, the Locura was the malicious code that we uh, unlocked when we tried to open Castle Nautilus, the Star League outpost that nearly disabled the Argo and killed us all. Uh-uh, no way, Sumire says. Lady Rano, that code completely screwed us at Castle Nautilus. It nearly detonated our fuel tanks. It's too dangerous to go tinkering with. We, we don't have a choice, Sumire. It's the closest thing we have to a weapon that could destroy that ship. If I were wrong about this, or I would have told us by now. Tell him, Doctor. We can do this. Can't we? <laughs> yeah, I think we can. Even if it doesn't destroy the Iberia, it'll cripple her long enough to take her out of the fight. But that code is a science experiment, not a weapon. I think I can modify it into one, but there will be risks involved, and I can't offer any guarantees. Uh, well, if we don't do this, Ostergaard wipes the restoration out with impunity. We can't let that happen. I imagine you'd feel that way. I'll go ahead and get started. We're gonna need to, uh, we're going to need a way to get the code onto Arstergard's ship. I'd suggest taking over a ground-based communications array, something on a network that the Iberia's computer trusts. There's a director at comm station on Lyris, the Throne World's second moon. It was the system's primary communications hub during my father's reign, and my uncle uses it for the same purpose now. We could use it to transmit the Lacura, then destroy it. The control tower is automated, so there shouldn't be any collateral damage. You'd be killing two birds with one stone. I like how you think. I'll rig the explosives. You're likely to encounter heavy resistance when we touch down. I'll see if I could find an engineering solution to help us deal with it. Maybe my team could seize control of their turrets. Make them fight for us for a change. You should probably try to bring a jump-capable lance if you can, Commander. Comrades like the one on Lyris tend to be housed on elevated platforms with lots of ramps and choke points. Thank you, Doctor. We're hinging everything on this planned success. It is vital that Ostergaard's attention remains fixed on me and the Restoration Army, to the exclusion of your operation on Lyris. And so, I will give him something to focus on. I'm accelerating our offensive. We're marching on the Directorate's final stronghold, Cordia City, the capital of Cormormadir. <laughs> well, it'll look like you're overextending yourselves. That's good. He'll be eager to punish you for it. Give him hell, Lady Arano. We'll rendezvous with you on Corum, my dear, when the job is done. We've got a job to do, people, and it'll be the biggest challenge we've ever taken on. So put on your war faces and follow the commander's lead. We got a dropship to crash. All right. And so I think, yeah, we're going to bring in this archer. And 
Actually, I'm thinking this is a good lance. I'm thinking this is a good lance output right here. I could bring in this Star League mech at this point, but kind of like the idea of keeping this in reserve for a minute, and we'll just see if any of these take any damage. We really shouldn't in this, but yeah, I guess we'll find out. So yeah, let's deploy this lance, and we'll bring two jump-capable Highlanders, an archer that doesn't need to jump. It could hit things that pretty much anywhere on the map anyway, and we'll bring one one juggernaut mech, that Atlas, that it doesn't matter where it's going. <laughs> it's it's going to be able to uh, to do a lot on its own, even without being very mobile. <clears throat> but of all the mechs to bring uh, that Warhammer with, we probably would have replaced the Atlas. It's just hard to justify replacing the Atlas. This is an all or nothing situation, Renegade. Ostagard is on his way to Cormadir as we uh, on his way to Cormadir to break the back of my army. And I'm on my way to join them. You have this one chance to wreck the Iberia and turn the tide. Do this, and our war will be won. <laughs> this is going to be a hell of a drop, Marcus. Our entire plan revolves around a science experiment gone wrong, but I have faith in Dr. Murad and a powerful desire to see Ostergaard dealt with permanently. But here we go. Interface initiated. Sorry about the rough landing. Fra, you okay in there? Yeah, I'm all right. This rumble seat is even less comfortable than it looks, though. Tell me about it. Did you find the care package I left in there for you? The explosives? Yes. I'll set them to bring down the control tower after I've uploaded the Lacura to the Iberia. Let's get moving, Commander. Lady Orano is counting on us. It doesn't look like we're timed on this. So we have to... Okay. So yeah, this is the comm control station. We have to get her here. And I guess these are the two areas where if I escort APCs to, we get some turrets on our side. Without any further ado, let's do this. Let's just sprint. Yeah, let's sprint up. Try and go as fast as possible. Yeah, that didn't take long. We got enemy turrets. We got mechs. We got a 75 ton mech over there. That's probably an Orion. It could be a Marauder. 35 ton, that's probably a Jenner. 65 ton, probably a Thunderbolt. 45 ton, probably a Blackjack. That would be my guess. So let's find out what we got here. And that Shredder target is going to be a problem. Yeah, we need to deal with that. And AC-20 will rip us to shreds if we get close to it. Fortunately, it's all short range, so it can't hit us from there. Uh, maybe I'll just jump. Yeah, I'm just going to jump. Here. Uh huh. Jump. Same thing with you. You're gonna stay right there. Unfortunately, I can't fire Move order received. from here, but that's okay. Nice and slow. Okay. Order. You open fire on that turret. First things first, let's get rid of this turret. We definitely don't want that AC-20 hitting us. Good, nice opening salvo. And there are our APCs. I'm still not messing around. I'm taking out that turret if I can. Ah, Vindicator. Actually, I'd rather that's a Vindicator than a um, Blackjack. So now we're just waiting for turns here. I hope we saw it for just a second. Yeah, it's an Orion. Based on the Damage weapon fired. Minimal. We can tell based on that. Jump. Let's see. Um. Oh, that sounds. Oh, what? Oh, Heavy, what's going on, buddy? Welcome to the stream. <laughs> so I got your uh, package all packaged up. Oh, we got good timing here. Welcome, Freakbot. Let's, uh, 
all right so let's let's deal with that real quick uh let's yeah let's jump here and um you know what i might just advance ever so slightly let me let me advance here and fire at that and then i'm gonna switch to just chatting and welcome everybody oh i thank you ghosty for handling the shout out i was right it was a jenner uh yeah let's fire at that jenner real quick before this thing has a chance to really do a whole a whole lot and I'll welcome everybody. Ah, oh, we already knocked it down because we blew off its right leg. And I'll get everybody caught up on what's going on right now. We're in the end game. We've reached Koromadir. We're actually on one of the moons. Let's actually wait for this turn to... Uh, this thing to move. I'm pretty sure that's a Thunderbolt. And of course they're going after the APC. Because they know if this reaches its target... Yeah, it can turn its turrets against it. Marvelous. Let's go to switch to chatting. This game is cool as hell, Heavy. Oh my god, have you never played uh, Battletech, either Tabletop or one of the uh, MechWarrior games? It's an awesome game. It's very, very faithful to uh, to the Tabletop game. And so, greetings, Raiders. I'm pretty sure you all know me, but just for the sake of it, I am Resplendent Seraph. We play crap tons of RPGs here, and sometimes the occasional strategy game. That's true, Heavy, you are new, so welcome, Heavy. And... Um, so, uh, so yes, I am Resplendent Seraph. I play RPGs, <laughs> uh, and the occasional strategy game like this, playing, playing strategy. Uh, Darkstar actually lent me a couple of, uh, puzzle games. I got to start playing those at some point. And, um, yeah, so as far as that goes heavy, uh, so my stupidity is heavy's win. Um, <laughs> so, so heavy is actually getting my, that, that 3090 that I was just talking about. I just got it in the box today before I left. So I'm going to take it over uh, to the UPS store on my lunch break tomorrow and get it in the mail to you. And I'll uh, I'll Discord message you uh, the tracking number when I get that. So uh, we ended up getting a bunch of th uh, components in uh, today. So I finally got the correct um, styrofoam things to really pack it in there. So the original box is in its own box now. And the heat sink and um, the back plate, the original ones, are now in with proper stone foam packing materials in that same box. So it's it'll probably get to you in a couple of days and things will be fun. I have not watched any of the alien movies yet, but I am eagerly looking forward. I'm going to I'm going to rewatch all of them. Um, but the one I'm most looking forward to is Alien 3, the um, the modified version. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and let's see. Oh, and uh, Ghosty already handled uh, the shout outs. So two man, two, <laughs> two man, two. Oh, I know. So, but I've already seen Aliens. I'm still going to rewatch it and I'm going to rewatch the order. I still think Aliens, the second one, is the best one. But I'm looking forward to seeing a good version of Alien 3 because the only version I've seen so far is the one that's been on TV and the one I rented from Blockbuster back in the day that was. Um, <laughs> uh so yeah i i'm i'm inclined to agree with heavy there and ghosty i i like the second one better too um but yeah the theatrical re <laughs> the theatrical version is complete <laughs> i don't know if i would call it trash but eh, <laughs> you know eh. uh to me the fourth one was trash that one was just uh a big old meh on the third yeah yeah i agree with that uh <laughs> So, uh, David Fincher almost turned down doing seven because of all the bullshit he went through. I, I can imagine. I can imagine. So, uh, right now we are playing Battletech and we're actually getting into the end part of the story campaign of Battletech. So, uh, the usual subtitle for it is 31st Century Combat. We're dealing with a lot of very interesting space opera tropes. And it essentially is almost like feudalistic space opera far future where uh you've got gigantic building sized battle mechs that you're in and waging war in but the battle mechs made two or three hundred years ago were better than the ones made today because as the various interstellar powers fought one another they blew up factories and destroyed labs and ultimately a lot of knowledge of how to make the really good stuff ended up getting lost and so anything made now in the present of the campaign setting is pretty much crappier than anything that was made in the old Star League days. So yeah, it's, an, a, it's a fantastic setting, very rich in lore. Uh, actually, it was awesome. Sarum was on earlier, so feel free. This is a good time to plug my YouTube channel. Uh, feel free to watch the earlier parts of this, of this episode on YouTube 
uh, and my YouTube information is uh, in the corner here. And uh, feel free also subscribe, like the whole shush uh, down below uh, if you haven't already. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I talk about a lot of those various things. Um, and of course, you know, I was trying to do a quick TLDR and we ended up getting a little tangent, but it also makes it fun. And it ended up, I think it ends up making it for a better lecture and very, um, a very brief introductory primer on some of the issues going on in the setting. And so once this particular mission ends, I think I can show a star map of various areas. But uh, but yeah, the whole thing, the whole setting takes place in the 31st century and it's it's a fun time. And so we've just began we've just begun the liberation phase and we just see, see if you'd come five minutes earlier, you would have seen the cinematics. Um, but that's okay. I will sum up real quick. Essentially, even though the Torian Concordat has left the war, we show up at Cormodur. Lady Urano essentially says, it's over, uncle. Give up the throne world. It's, it's done. Uh, it, it, it's end game. And he's like, you, you know, I taught you better than that. You, this is the time to negotiate. And she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She calls him on that bullshit real freaking quick. Uh, cause she's like, if the situation reversed, you wouldn't even negotiate. You would just be attacking me like a ruthless dog. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, she, she does not put up with any of that. And she calls him on that, on that bullshit right away. And, um, at that point she's like, all right, he's stalling for something. And I don't know what it is, but if he's stalling, that means we're dropping and we're doing it right now. And so she takes her entire army drops on the planet. And at this point, crazy Commodore Ostergaard shows up in an Iberia class dropship, which uh, has a ridiculous amount of armament. He still has, I think, a battalion of battle mechs in the damn thing. And at that point, he's like, you took my son from me. I'm going to, and all my hope for the future died with him. And so now I'm going to take yours. And it's, it's like, it's hardcore. Uh, and at that point, you realize how fucking crazy this guy is. He's basically completely lost his mind. And, uh, but he's right, because if he lands uh, at this point, She's already committed her force. If she backs out to avoid the Iberia, the Directorate's forces will cut her to ribbons. And if the Iberia lands, she's between them and it's game over and she knows her, her clock will get punched. So she's like, hey, remember that malicious code we opened uh, a couple of months back that almost killed all of us? Upload that to the Iberia. Fuck those guys. And everybody's like, that sounds like really freaking crazy. And everybody else is like, uh, do we have any other options? Okay, crazy plan for the win. And so right now we have landed on one of the moons of Coromodir because we're going to take over a communications array to upload that malicious code to the Iberia uh, and make Commodore Ostergaard have a worse day than the one he did when his son died. And that's plan A. <laughs> and so that pretty much catches everybody up on an incredibly abridged, here's the current status of everything going on. <laughs> And so, yeah, with all that said, welcome, welcome, Raiders. <laughs> here we go. Um, and while I'm here, I may as well do some shout outs for anybody that might be here. Uh, I'll do a shout out for Rob the Wonderful, who has an awesome stream also whenever he's playing. Oh, look at that. I was just I was just mentioning Rob. <laughs> uh, so there you go. And <laughs> perfect timing. So he was last, last playing Stardew Valley. That's a chill. That's a very chill game. He beat Namco vs. Capcom. That game was bananas and awesome. Uh, I highly recommend going back in his YouTube channel and rewatching that. Uh, <laughs> I love Namco vs. Capcom. I cannot believe we did not get that game. If we got that game, I would have totally played it. I am definitely looking forward to seeing the sequels on his stream. Uh, not, a, not necessarily being a shameless plug. Yeah, just wait for the sequels. Yeah, right. I'm... I am definitely looking forward to that. At the same time, I can't imagine there is batshit as the first game, but at the same time, I'm also like, can they can they come up with something even more crazy than this? <laughs> I, 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 I'm eagerly awaiting with bated breath. Uh, so yeah, those are those are fun times, and we have a good time with his chat. He's got a good community of, of, of chat guys too. Uh, same with Freakbot. He's got a great chat community. I think you're not take mostly you guys just dropped in on me. But, uh, but I love you guys all. I want to thank you for rating. And yeah, I think Seraph uh, needs to... No, no, I've got enough water for the moment. So without any further ado, we're going to go back to this. Welcome to uh, welcome to the channel, Heavy Arms. It is good to see you. We're going to get back to some uh, 31st century tactical pew pew here. We got this 
turret here that we need to destroy. We got this Jenner that we have uh, definitely uh, made want to kill itself. So I think I'm going to go over here and I can't hit it with basically anything. So we're going to cruise over here and we're just going to finish off that shredder turret with that LRM 20. Unfortunately, the Atlas, the Atlas 7D, it's slow and all of its weapons are fairly short range. So it really only works On as a frontline brawler, but it's so slow that it's, I mean, unless you're deliberately slowing down the rest of your lance, it's not natural for it to be forward. <laughs> That's the unfortunate part about this 7D, but in cases like this, it draws fire really well. Oh, yeah, okay, we have fight. it's official. Rumble seats are a bad idea, and I don't like getting shot at. <laughs> it would help if I went back to that. Thank you, uh, Deep Fry. I appreciate that. <laughs> so we just destroyed this turret, uh, and that's the only thing you missed. Because uh, all I did was is shoot at it with the Atlas. So I appreciate that, Deep Fry. I would have, I probably would have caught that in a second, but. <laughs> uh, here on the here on the Empyrean channel with Resplendent Seraph, I do strive not to be too professional here. Waiting on you, Commander. Jump over here. I think we can hit you with just about all this stuff. Yep. No sweat. We'll jump into these into these woods here. And yeah, we're gonna pick on this Jenner that's down. And yeah, let's try and take out its leg. Because if we take out its leg, that mech is disabled. Ah, oh, we missed with the PPC. But we still ah, oh, we got its we got a torso instead. Yeah, critical hit. Damn. I mean, it's okay for her to be excited about it, but that still sucks. Ooh, good. There we go. Lightning cannon. <laughs> so we t we talked about that earlier. A PPC, a particle projection cannon. Uh, in this universe, it's a cannon that literally fires a lightning bolt. It's awesome. And things are close together. You can get hit with stray shots. That part sucks, but it's just a couple of missiles. Yeah, now the Jenner's gonna stand, but whatever. The servos in that leg are, are severely damaged, so it's limited. It's kind of got limited mobility. Ready for right, orders. So you, I'm gonna advance ever so slightly, and I could go after the laser turret. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go after the laser turret. Coordinates received. Because it's gonna take too long for these. Uh, various armored units to take over these units. I'm just going to take out this laser turret so it can't fire these at me entirely. LRM Swarm! Almost got all of its armor. One more volley all to do it. Actually, the, the APC may do it. Today, APC today. Wow, and it's not firing at the APC. Wow, that's amazing. Damage is minor, Commander. Let's see what we can do. another APC going for that unit. So I may not try to take out this turret, because you're getting really close. Actually I may not even you know, maybe I shouldn't fire at the turrets now. You know what? I may stop firing at the turrets. Those APCs Reported are making minimal damage. mad headway here. Okay, so... Yep, Bara. Because it's on patrol station. Bara must survive. Good. Bara's in... Yep. Okay, good. Bara's in this Highlander. So I need to get this mech... here. <laughs> with all due haste. So we're going to jump some more. Yeah, let's go here. Let's see. Oh, yeah, let's let's just end this Jenner. Oh, you know what? Oh, we can't really. All right. Yeah, let's end this Jenner. Engaging jump, jump. What we may do. Yeah, let's just use some of that. Some of that. Um, so this is our morale meter, essentially resolve. We could use that to use special moves. So I just did that for the vigilance here. Essentially, it gives me cover, damage resistance, and all that stuff. I'm not going to bother. This should be more than sufficient to destroy this Jenner. 
blew off its torso just with the gauze rifle. Yeah, that's it. Goodbye, Jenner. Enemy mech destroyed. I'm gonna destroy this catapult in my next ball. Yeah, unfortunately, that might be it for the APC. Ooh, it didn't destroy the APC. That's very lucky. Oh, I fixed it, Heavy. Uh, Deep Fry was right. I was I was just still on chatting when I went back to game. I just forgot to switch back to the game. <laughs> Standing by. I fixed I fixed the glitch. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, let's just go up and nuke this Vindicator. Acknowledged. Let's go up and nuke this Vindicator. It's over. I don't see this Vindicator surviving this, but let's see what happens. <laughs> wow, that Vindicator survived that. Solid connection on that one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm also bringing an incredibly... What well, looks like Game Pass is acting up. There we go. One of the extra vehicles with me destroyed that. And also, damn, it won't let me download Gears of War. Oh, it's so lame. Yeah, that's how Freakbot was playing Gears of War. I wonder if you just have to reboot your Xbox or reboot the computer. What can I do for you? Uh, can I target? Now I could target this Orion with that, and I think that's what we're going to do. Yeah, let's just do that. We'll target the Orion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can do that. Atlas delivers some serious punishment. It doesn't have much in the array of range, but yeah, when something's close enough to that Atlas, it regrets life very quick. Oh, yeah, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm going to take some fire here. Oh, wow, the turret missed entirely. That was pretty awesome. Oh, why, thank you, Infinity V0. I appreciate the follow. Welcome to the stream. I'm taking heavy hits, Commander. We're looking to finish off the, uh, the story mode here. We are just playing the vanilla game, also. Damage minimal. Probably should have mentioned that earlier. All right, now we're going to make that. Now we're going to get past this catapult. Jump. Yes. Uh, yeah, we'll just, we'll just do that. Jumping. Up we go. Actually, I'm going to do Vigilance again. And actually, I don't need to do Vigilance. We're going to do Precision Strike, though. And, yeah, let's delete the catapult. Oof. We must have gotten so close with that, I probably missed the gauze rifle. Oh, we just got a turret there. Powering down enemy turrets, Commander. Give us a moment, and we'll modify their targeting protocols. In a second, that one will go, and we'll get the turrets on that side. Well, I'm glad I stopped firing at the turrets. I'm actually surprised that we got uh, up there that fast. I don't, these robots are crazy, right? <laughs> yeah, these, these are sizes of buildings, and uh, yeah, our pilots are usually in the head here. So yeah, time to lob a nice LRM-40 here Locked at this Orion. Off. More damage. Ooh, I think we're gonna, oh yes. Nice LRM ammo explosion. That's, that'll blow off the darn, uh, the damn torso. <laughs> yeah, Powering all tough for that turret. Turns, Commander, <laughs> give us a moment and we'll rewrite their targeting protocols. Yeah, at this point, these, these enemies are, uh, are in serious trouble. It's uh, pretty much by. game over for them, really. I don't see how they... I just don't see how they get over this. But, all right. So, you know what? I'm going to advance... Yeah, we'll just do this. I want to get this thing out of the way because then I can have the Highlander sprint over here instead of... Um... Oh, geez. These are going to take three rounds to reprogram? That's fine. I don't think I need to, uh, yeah, we're going to generate a crap ton of heat. 
and but we're gonna fire everything and i think this catapult's gonna be toast after this All and if it's not yep yeah, there he goes and even if it wasn't at that point the next round i would have had the atlas cool time. down by advancing and punching it yeah we get melee attacks in this game too heavy arms <laughs> Good to go. oh it's great fun okay so yep i'm just gonna advance here and we will shoot the Orion with a bolt. You know what? <sighs> Doing some math in my head real quick because it's got damage reduction, but if I only target one thing on there, I'll get breaching shot. You know what? We'll toggle the LRM off and we'll just shoot you with the PPC and do full damage to it. Here we go. Of course, only if I hit for another shot <laughs> my favorite <laughs> more bolts of lightning <laughs> two of which hit that vehicle is doing a lot of damage to that thing waiting for orders all right uh you can i don't want you to be too out of position i want you to be over here we're going to light this orion up with some more lrm fire and that's as far forward as I'm going to move this archer. The archer I'm going to keep here from this point forward. I don't remember if reinforcements show up to this. It never gets old. <laughs> At this point, it's already taken over the turrets, so I don't care if it destroys that. Okay, so now sprint. Let's get up here. Now I'm just worried about this. Because we'll actually go further with the sprint than the jump. <laughs> so the game is called Battletech Heavy, if you ever want to uh, play this. It's by um, uh, HBS, uh, Hair Brains Games. And uh, it is a fun, fun game. Same studio that did Shadowrun uh, Hong Kong. Waiting for orders. Let's advance that yeah that's better we have ourselves a firing solution and fire oh my wait am i did it turn its back to me okay yeah scrolling let me just make sure i'm not going crazy okay this pilot just did something asininely stupid and suicidal if you're in a battle mech, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember them. That's a stark difference of games. At least I think, unless I'm thinking of something different. Is, is Hairbrain, is, this, this is Hairbrain's games, right? Or am I thinking the Telltale games? Um, you know, now I'm, now now Seraph's doubting himself. Uh, once I exit back to the title screen, I'll make sure I'm getting the developer correct. Um, two times, well, it's not two times damage, but if it had cover, it no longer has cover. And the armor plating on the back here is much thinner than the front. So yeah, you generally never want to allow a mech to take shots in your back. Also, precision strike, I'm now going to have a lot fewer. It doesn't even have any armor left in the back location. I do not, for the life of me, know what this Orion is thinking here. But yeah, I'm going for the jugular. Fuck this guy. <laughs> So, I mean, not really, but I mean, yes, but actually no. <laughs> you don't technically do more damage. It just has fewer hit points. So same idea, but uh, yeah, asininely stupid of it to do that. I, I don't know what it was thinking there. Unless the pilot realized the futility of continuing the fight and wanted it over with as soon as possible. That's the only thing I can think of at that point. <laughs> I mean, I got, I got nothing now. I don't know why they would do that. <laughs> uh, so anyway, yeah, let's just take up a position here, position cool confirmed. down. And we'll take up positions on the interior here. Same with you. Let's just jump and let's do that. Ready, just in case set. something else shows up. And we got turrets to help us. Same thing. You know what? I may go in here and look for some cover here in a second. We'll have two rounds to do it. <laughs> Squish! <laughs> Alpha turrets are ours, Commander. 
Bravo turrets belong to us. Good. So now we got turrets. So if there are reinforcements, they've got our lance to deal with, a lance's form X, and the vehicles that they didn't destroy, and the turrets they used to have that now work for us. So, yeah, I don't see anything ending well for the Oregon Director of Forces that may show up here. Perfect. All right, I'm inside. Should take me a few minutes to find the Array's control center, hook up the drive, and prep the system to transmit the Lacura to the Iberia. And on that note, I'm going radio silent for a bit. I need to concentrate while I work on this. I'll be in touch soon. Commander, be advised. I'm seeing heavy activity on all Directorate comm channels. You're about to have company. <laughs> well, those, uh, that company is in for a very rude surprise in a minute. <laughs> oh, the, these poor, poor bastards. <laughs> Heads up, Commander. We got a Directorate Lance touching down. Yeah, they're, they're going to die a lot. <laughs> So I'm going to keep um, my mech. Well, all right, let's let them move around a little bit. And I'll explain what some of these mechs typically are and what the what the story is. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me they'd shoot at the turrets. Yeah, I'm sure they're thinking, uh, well, we got to just we got to dispatch them as quickly as possible. Uh, little knowing uh, how how horrible, uh, <laughs> how horribly their lives are about to get uh, completely dismantled here in a second. I'm going to have this archer move back. On my way. I don't want this archer. This is my lightest mech that I've brought into the into the battle, but because of the terrain here and yeah, it is miserable. Here's a ramp, but you've got very limited mobility throughout this entire map. So that's why I sent the jump capable Highlander up here. But this archer, I could stick around here, but I could hit anything on the map because the LRM range is really obscene and uh, all right so we let's see let's do a damage assessment here this is a heavy lance so we've got a marauder this is giving the rest of this lance a damage um damage reduction so yeah this marauder i will take out as soon as i can we've got and the marauder has two particle projection cannons an auto cannon five and two medium lasers we've got a grasshopper which is a jump capable heavy mech heavy armor it can jump it's got four medium lasers a large laser in my opinion the grasshopper is the scariest thing here we got a thunderbolt this is a heavy mech also it's only 65 tons as opposed to the grasshoppers 80 and then we've got another orion here which has the autocannon 10 which is its primary armament but still has some good range on it with that lrm 15 pair of medium lasers and two serum fours I am going to shoot this grasshopper and actually I'm even going to precision strike. I'm going to tar target this torso and try and do his. Oh, oh. Hmm. We're going to precision strike grasshopper and we're going to target the, tor the torso here and we're going to try and do as much damage. We're going to try and bypass the arm and do as much damage to this grasshopper, the side of this grasshopper as possible. And the reason I'm firing at it from here is because the archer actually has two medium lasers on it that I rarely get to use. This is going to hurt this grasshopper a lot. Wow, I didn't destroy a location, though. That's amazing. Scored a critical hit. But we did tear through its armor. That was a nice salvo. That works for me. Sure. All right. So I am going to need to get Farah back in a little bit. But what I may do is jump up here see what I've got. Can I only do missiles attacks from here? Ooh, I can hit the Orion from long range. So that's what we're going to do. Jump. The top of this comm tower. And I'm going to try a very unlikely head hit. We had an 18% chance, but if it hits, we're going to blow this Orion's head clean off and we'll end up very ahead of the game. Going for the jugular here. Nope. But we still crit with the LRM-5. 15. So one of the, oh, ho, 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 we still blew the torso off because we got a critical hit. Critical damage detected. So that was nice. Yeah. 
they're returning fire. But I'm not really worried at what they can do at long range. I think I'm just going to come up here and ruin this marauder. <laughs> On the move. Definitely need to take out this Marauder. And the reason why I chose to go about it in this way is because I can do a precise shot. We're going to Alpha Strike and we're going to go for its head. We actually have two shots to take out this Marauder's head because the Ultra Auto Cannon 20 fires twice. And so we've got two times one out of five, essentially. Well, we didn't get it, but we're still going to critically damage this Marauder. That hit something good. Yeah, it did. Because even without that, getting hit with an AC-20 twice, your mech is going to be in a real bad way after that. Ooh, back hits. <laughs> and they fire, they're firing at me again. We got some nice action here. We didn't get either of our cheese shots, so the enemy is still standing. We got nine rounds remaining. We essentially have to defend far off for nine rounds. These guys are not going to last nine rounds against me. They just, they don't have the ordinance. I hear ya. They just, they just don't. Uh, they, they just don't. So one thing I am going to do here is I'm going to jump here. And because of that, I'll have a back shot at the Thunderbolt. And we're just going to core the Thunderbolt from behind. I leap. That's I one of the best soar. parts about a jump capable mech. We can just jump right into the back. I don't have a precise shot anymore because I used it all up. But we're going to put this right into the back. Uh, anyway. And we're going to have some fun. <laughs> Want some more, huh? yeah, the Thunderbolt didn't even get to go yet, and it already lost its torso. Oop, back attacks. All three of those PPCs hit. And now my own, now my turret is firing at the Orion and we knocked it over because we filled up its stability meter. So we were able to knock it down. <laughs> More damage. All right, well, let's see. I'm going to attack the Grasshopper again, which didn't move for some reason. Oh, right, because we moved after the Grasshopper and now we're going before. So yeah, I'm just gonna shoot the Grasshopper again. So much for its torso. Reporting critical hit. I guess one of my APCs, they couldn't do much went and it couldn't do anything, so it just stayed there. And right, so it took a breaching shot against the Atlas. Whoop-de-doo, you missed. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to attack from position here. That's one of the things I love about the Highlander is I could just jump to some high ground and now I've got, I could just take pot shots at things like this Orion. I will just take, yeah, I'm just going to shoot at the Orion, I think. It's got... Yeah, let's do it. Let's go for the kill here. We got it. Going for the jugular. Enemy mech destroyed. Oh, what's this marauder doing? Melee? Of course, the angle of attack. Nope, oh, nope. Oh, shooting at the tape. Yeah, I finally decided to take out that turret. It should have done that the turn before. It finally learned its lesson. Holy smokes. Okay, so I'll explain in a second what just happened there because obviously a lot's going on. So clearly the Marauder didn't do the math of how much it would take to destroy that turret, but the pilot of the Marauder said, all right, I don't care how much heat that this strike is going to take. I want that turret to die. And it fired past the heat threshold of that mech. So um, anytime you generally do anything in this game, you will generate heat. Movement takes a slight amount of heat. Jumping using jump jets uses at least measurable heat, but still not a lot. 
and different weapons will generate different degrees of heat. So auto cannons don't generate all that much heat. PPCs generate a lot of heat. And I'm gonna generate this concept. I'm gonna demonstrate this concept now. So my heat meter here, right here, that's a little easier to see it. Uh, right now, this is my heat from that I have from last, from last, last turn. And what I could do is I could just turn around and punch this thing, but I kind of want to demonstrate how this works. So I'm going to go up here. I'm just going to look this way and I'm going to put some slugs into the side of this Marauder. Roger and I'm going to show, kind of give another demonstration of how the heat works in this game. And so, uh, yeah, firing everything like this, let's see. It shows the difference between the heat of where I'm at, and this would be where it is next. So I'm way under my heat threshold. But say my heat threshold was maybe here instead, and the heat threshold really depends on the pilot. So uh, say the heat threshold is here, but I really wanted to take out this Marauder. I may consciously allow the mech to overheat past the threshold and do damage to the mech just for the sake of doing more damage to the enemy. And that's what the Marauder chose to do. This Marauder chose to go way past the threshold and that Marauder is still standing. Sometimes I guess it must have just done. Normally, if you really, if you like not just exceed the measure, but you like fill the meter, your mech will not only take damage, it will shut down. <laughs> uh, but maybe that's maybe that's tabletop where the mech shuts down. But I, I thought I thought that was this game too. Uh, it's definitely in Mech Warrior 5 where your mech might shut down from overheating. We don't have to worry about that problem. We're just gonna shoot this Marauder. Acknowledged. So we blew up its left arm and missed with the other bolt. And let's see what else we did. Yep. So we destroyed its arm. And then we blew off its torso. <laughs> yeah, that, that mech has taken a lot of damage. This Marauder is... Yep, and now we've blown off both of its torsos. That Marauder is now incredibly damaged. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Waiting for orders. I think I will just stay put and shoot this grasshopper. Same thing. Yep, I'm good with this. Let's fire. Come on, come on. Yep, we got it. Goodbye, Grasshopper. Gotcha. Oh, this is going to hurt a lot. <laughs> More turrets. There it goes. You know what? That Marauder took a pounding, though. I give it credit. It somehow managed to still stand Receiving. throughout all of that. One of the other nice parts about LRMs, I don't have to have direct line of sight to the target. I could just lob this, um, this volley of LRMs over the top of this and still hit the Thunderbolt. And that's what I'm doing. I think this will destroy the Thunderbolt. Wow, it did not destroy the Thunderbolt. That's amazing. Well, Thunderbolt's firing at the Highlander. Okay. Please. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's go for some more. Oh, I think I can only hit it with LRMs. Yeah, all right, fine. Let's just return fire from my current position. Sure, return fire. <laughs> And that vehicle just is... Whoever the pilot is of that vehicle, they're hitting with a lot of PPCs. Waiting for okay, so now if I shoot, I am in a world of trouble for uh, for this Atlas. So I am not going to overheat again. But what I could do is I could at least get a little closer and I could shoot some things. And that's what I'm going to do. Copy that. I'm going to untoggle the Ultra Autocannon 20 because that's what's generating most of the heat. Particular mech, even though autocannons usually don't generate that much heat. 
but this one does. This one generates 40 heat. An ultra auto cannon does generate a decent amount of heat. See, just toggling that off, I can now fire everything else and actually sink some heat. So I'm just gonna cool off this round a little bit and fire everything else. Copy that. That's still gonna be a lot of damage, even though it's primary weapon. Yep, goodbye, Thunderbolt. Hostile removed. <laughs> And with that, there are no other enemy combatants. We just took out all the reinforcements. There might still be another Lance that comes in to try to give us a bad day. Hello, Cleopatra. And my co-host has joined us. Cleo, hello, Cleo. Who's a good girl? All right, I'm gonna jump down here. Uh, that way when Fara comes out, I'm ready for her. Other than that, I'm just gonna brace. Stabilizing it. Yep. All right, we got, oh, we got Assault Max inbound. All right, so the better Lance just landed. And they're all up there, which isn't that big a deal. So the Jenner is the only light one. That Banshee is heavy, but I'm not overly concerned about that Banshee. It's fast, but it's very lightly armed. Yeah. Uh, pivot. I may not shoot at the Jenner here. Because we could shoot at just about anything. Uh, of these, I think the target's going to be the Jager Mech. The biggest problem is going to be the Battlemaster. That's a lot of weaponry. This Battlemaster could output a lot of damage, and it's well armored. The Banshee, on the other hand, uh, the 3M, it's actually not, actually, maybe this isn't the bad Banshee, but it means well armored, but as far as weapon complement is concerned, it weighs 10 tons more than the Battlemaster, but the Battlemaster could put out a lot more damage than the Banshee can. This Jager Mac, on the other hand, has got, uh, that's, that may not look like much. That could put a lot of hurt on you. It's, it's a, it's a high ordnance mech, but the armor is tissue paper. So I am going to target this Jager Mac, and we're going to put this out of commission first. Affirmative. That's going to be my goal. Yeah, we already blew off an arm, and I just opened fire on it. Did some heavy damage. <laughs> that's that's the, okay. So this lance has pilots that are a little smarter, and it knew how to really manage its armament. So it fired just enough to destroy that turret, and still took a shot at me. Right up here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do some vigilance. I want to be well protected. I'm probably gonna be the only thing that these guys even fire at. Because over here, I don't think they can even target my mechs. I don't think they even see them. Uh, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm the only thing that they're even gonna see. And it positioned, see this is actually really smart of the AI pilot. This part of the mech is damaged on this side clear. So I blew off this arm already thanks to Medusa's shot. So it intentionally pivoted its mech to aim its better armored section right at me. So if I do shoot at it, it's a little more survivable. It's actually smart. This is just, I mean, it's, it's you know, basic 101, but a lot of times the AI pilots don't do this. I'm kind of be surprised how often they don't. I still am going to shoot this j -Rick. But let's go for, because shooting at its side really isn't going to do much for me. So I'm going to go for the instant win here on this. Yeah, and hit. Sorry. I mean, that's about what we would have gotten. That's about what we would have expected to be just shot normally anyway. But if that gauze rifle had hit its head, that Jager Mech's out of the fight all automatically. Let's see, can the PPC carrier hit from that distance? Nope, it still has to close in a little bit. And this is why I did Vigilance, because yeah, uh, they are solely going to attack me up here. Waiting on you, Commander. It's an interesting place for these guys to have jumped up on. I think it's probably... Let's see if I can the high shoot road. anything over here with that PPC. I don't think I can. I think I'm stuck solely with... Yeah, that PPC can barely hit. Oh, that is at least a target worth shooting at. Maybe the Banshee. 
All right, so what I think I might do here. All right, what do I rather, what would I rather shoot at? I think I'd rather shoot at the Battlemaster here. All right, so we're gonna multi-target here. Multi-target that and that. Yep, that works. Only because uh -huh. the Jager mech is already damaged. Let's see what else I can do to it. All right, not much, but hey, every little bit helps. I'd rather get a hit of any type, even if it's, you know, a well-armed opponent, armored opponent. At least we'll get it started. These guys are moving up closer, closer, good. Next turn, they might be able to start firing because the PPC does have a really impressive range. I was very lucky there to keep my sniper turret. Commander. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do anything with this Atlas. Uh, I may as well just stay here and shoot you with that LRM-20. The problem is the aye, Atlas aye. is just so slow. Let's see what they do. At least this way I'm in cover in the event that I can get them to come down at all. But yeah, shoot that with an LRM. Maybe I can blow off one of the legs. That's right, Dark Star damage is damage. All right, we blew off a torso. We'll take that. Inflicted some heavy damage. And we knocked it down. Even better. All right, sensor lock. <laughs> yeah, that turret that the Battlemaster didn't just destroy just really messed up that mech. And there it goes. Oh, actually, I think that was the turret that the Battlemaster la missed. If the Battlemaster makes that shot, their mech is still alive, technically. Boom. I'd say the battle is going well for us so far. Ah, there we go. Commander, Farah, I've just touched down, but we've got a problem. I have a squadron of director aerospace fighters on radar, and they're headed our way. Damn it, we need to clear out of here before they arrive. How much time have we got? Not much, and they're carrying enough hardware to blow our leopard to hell and back again. Ah, so we need to get to the leopard very, very quickly. I could do this. Just keep the directorate off me, Commander. I, I need only a few more minutes. All right, hold the base while for our rigs to come array. We got four rounds remaining on that. Let's see what this Jenner is doing. Ah, the Jenner is going <laughs> to back off and shoot at the LRM turret. <laughs> Kind of smart on its part. Okay. Yes, Commander. All right, that being the case, yeah, let's move a little more towards that. I don't think anything else is showing up now, but just for the sake of it, I'll start moving towards the dropship because we need to be able to get the hell out of Dodge very, very quickly. Let's see, do I pick on that Jenner and take it out entirely or do I go after one of these two mechs? Let's go after the Jenner. Let's finish it off. Let's take it out of commission. Yeah, I didn't see that Jenner surviving that. Back destroyed. Now me. We're gonna vigilance again. Firm. Precision strike. Let's uh let's go for it. It's low percentage, but at some point when we do this enough times, we'll eventually get one of these. Nope, we missed. That's okay. Wow, you missed both times. Thank you. Ready for orders. Okay, if I advance this far, can I even shoot at you with any? Okay, then I'm just staying put. I'm just going to shoot you with an LRM volley. I think we'll go up to the Battlemaster since it's at least damaged. Got it. We'll just pick on this Battlemaster. It's the bigger threat anyway. All right, Heavy, thank you for dropping by. Thank you for the follow. It's always good to see you. I will be in touch on Discord tomorrow. Enemy turn. What's this Battlemaster doing? Probably a turret. Yep. Hey, better the turret than me. Yeah, it destroyed the turret finally, but hey, it works. 
Murr. What's up, cat? You talking to me? Hello, cat. I know. I love you too. What can I do for you? Uh, let's, let's advance a little. Yeah, we'll just advance. On my way. We'll advance a little bit here. That way, at least, I've got two mechs that can fire. You know what? I may. Let's go for the same cheesy shot. At some point, one of these is. One of these is gonna hit. <laughs> Ooh, we destroyed the left leg. Cool. There's more where that came from. Hello, cat. You're gonna hop up and oh, you're gonna try to drink out of my water, aren't you? Come on, you've got your water. You don't want my water. I already drank most of my water. Hi, honey. Hello, cat. All right, give me, give me a second, cat. I will give you more water. Hello. Hi, cat. Hello, cat. Okay. <laughs> Well, they're really going for the Battlemaster now. I don't have to go for the headshot on that. I'll probably go for the headshot on the Banshee. Yep, open fire, please. Oh, I can't go, can't do it. That's okay. I know, I know, you want water. Okay, give me two, let me two seconds. I'm not even gonna hit the pause. I'm gonna give Cat water, if that's what she wants. Stay. I know, I know. Oh, come on. Give yourself room. Hello. Back up there. You go. So the funny part is. <laughs> I came so close to the ridge. Oh boy. This is going to be good. <laughs> so. Okay, before I read chat real quick. So, mind you, my wonderful co host, Cleo, who is. Let's, who, I'm just going to switch to just chatting real quick here. So you could, cause she'll she'll be visible here. She's oh yeah, she's just at a camera range here. But um, to hop up on the desk here, right under my keyboard, right over there. Hi, hello, hi, I love you. I know, I love you too. What are we doing? Oh, you're you're gonna hop. Oh, please don't do that. Yeah, go that way. Yeah, please go that way, cat. All right, that's all you wanted. Good grief. So uh, <laughs> that's that's Cleo. Uh, but right, she's so fluffy. Yeah, she's she's a good girl. She's my Chonk Master three thousand. Uh, <laughs> a lot of Chonk. And despite, uh, but uh, despite that, she is a very agile, quick, strong cat. And uh, wait, why is it not? Oh, there we go. I have to refocus to, for it to grab the battle thing here. Uh, right under my keyboard on the floor, she has her own cup of water which I was drinking out of last stream, because when I finish it, I put it on the floor for her. So she walks by that to then hop up here, take a sip out of this, and then leave. That is my, that is my cat chat. <laughs> so yeah, Cleo. All right, so this is this is gonna be good. So Darkstar uh, also plays D&D, kind of like, a, uh, is this a fellow D&D aficionado. So I came close to rage quitting my D&D session tonight not even 15 minutes into the session. Last week, we found out my mentor was turned into a vampire. We took him down. Everyone started acting like a loot goblin when I said that I was going to bury his sword, a holy avenger with his remains, a sword that I was entitled to because of my position in the church as his successor. Okay, so for anybody that doesn't know D&D, that is a big freaking deal. I was so pissed that everyone's trying to derail a key story moment because loot, even though none of them could use it. Oh my goodness. So you're dealing with a bunch of tunes that um, oh, 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 oh my god. Oh, oh, oh my god. And if any of them have read the Iliad, it's probably like when uh, Hector dies and everybody's like, guys, this was our hero and you're just acting like a loot goblin just all pawing over his armor to, to grab the pauldrons and all of that. And it's just like, what? It was never your water. It was always been hers. Yes, it was so true. <laughs> any cat owner will tell you, that is so true. <laughs> oh my goodness. I feel that though, Dark Star, in my soul. Uh, oh my goodness. Okay, so yeah. Um, the hilarious irony of it all was that I'm the min maxer of the group and I don't do heavy RP. Wow. Oh my goodness. If the min maxer is doing that, 
Who are you playing with? <laughs> yeah, the Holy Avenger is always a big deal. Uh, like, what the hell? Oh my god. Wow. Wow. I, 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 I have... I have... I have no words for that, actually. Um... I, I just... I, I do not. I do not have words for that. Um... My... My goodness. Um... So yeah, I am not the min-maxer of the group. Uh... <laughs> I will usually RP characters to a fault, uh, even when it's to my detriment. So definitely not a min maxer. So yeah, I, I, I would, I would be on Team Darkstar there of like, no, 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 we're burying the Holy Avenger. Uh, that, that's his right as his successor. Whatever, whatever he says goes. Um, and uh, yeah, wow, wow, wow. I just. I think I'm taking psychic damage trying to process that. <laughs> that is bonkers. We're gonna try this again. Still low percentage, but again, it's an unhurt target. Oh, we got it. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> and that is why sometimes we will go for the head because it saves us a lot of time. We now no longer have to do as much damage to that target. I mean, a lot of times won't bother with a headshot against something like a Jenner or something lighter. But uh, yeah, for for something heavy like that, oh yeah. All right, so we're pretty much good here. I'm just gonna get back into position while Farah comes back out. We're gonna be good to go here. Atlas, get back here. Heading yep. Out. A, a team evacuate. Don't need to tell me twice. <laughs> yep, we're just gonna, we're gonna get to the dropship and get ready to dust off of here before all those Aerotech fighters show up. I end up having the sword melted into an urn to shut them all. <laughs> oh my goodness! The you had to destroy the heavy. This is Commodore Samuel Ostercard, formerly of the Concord Navy. As of today, I no longer serve my country. I come to you as a grieving father, not a Torian sailor. My actions are my own. In three minutes' time. My ship will enter weapons range of your position. At that time, your lives will come to an abrupt end. I suggest you pray to whatever gods you... <laughs> <laughs> well, Ostergaard. That didn't sound good. <laughs> Bro, we are out of time. Those fighters are almost within weapons range. I need to come get you now. Remote trigger armed, explosives primed. I'm ready. Meet me at the evac point. And we'll get the hell out of here. Mission ah, good. Successful. We didn't have to, have to get to the leopard. So, uh, my God, I can't believe you had to melt down a Holy Avenger to shut them up. Oh my goodness. I don't even know if I've, I play, I've played a lot of Paladins. It's my favorite character class to play. And I don't know if I've ever even gotten a Holy Avenger as a Paladin. Uh, I've been playing Paladins since high school, so. Let's say 1995. <laughs> no one in the party, right? And and you already said no one can use it, so no one's even a paladin. Like, what are we what are we doing here? <laughs> like, excellent work, Commander. I was right to put my faith in you. You're a critical part of the restoration effort, and we made a nice, cool three million sea bills. And so now we get some plot, and we will get to the next part of the true end game here because we have one mission left. We're almost there. And we're all level 50. Wow, that's pretty far for a DD and d game. So even someone who multi-classed at this point, yeah, you wouldn't get the full benefit. Uh, wow. F flip table. <laughs> no, you came to the right place to vent, Darkstar. We, <laughs> I know your pain, man. I know your pain. Oh my goodness. So we got some decent salvage. I will complete that Banshee. Because uh, yeah, we may as well sell. Oh, we'll complete that Orion too. Uh, is there anything else we want to complete? And yeah, we can complete a Jenner if we want to just get that. Is there any good other salvage here? Yeah, sure. We'll take the plus three laser. Ooh, that's a good, that's a good particle projection variant. So not only do particle projection cannons in this game fire literal bolts of lightning, which is awesome. Uh, but in this game, 
they also do stability damage. So they do 50 points of damage, and this improved variant does 50 stability damage. And in my experience playing this game, this is the better variant because you can knock so much stuff down with this. Uh, so yeah, that's a great, great component salvage. So yeah, we made some good money there. I will read that comment in just a second, Darkstar. Is it? We got a cutscene here. Eventually. We will eventually have a cutscene. Come on, game. I think we're supposed to have music here, but sometimes the game glitches out and it doesn't play the sound. But all there would be is music for this part. But it is frustrating when the game glitches like that. So much for the Iberia. In a weird way, actually, the silence was more poignant for that part. Yeah, the audio kicks back in here. The Iberia is gone, Uncle. Ostergaard can't help you now, and you have no more cards to play. For the good of our people, you must end this. Order your troops to stand down. Our people. That's what this has always been about, you know. Had you only listened to me, I would never have taken your throne. I didn't desire power for its own sake. Right. My only care was for the reach. It's prosperity. It's enduring glory. Yeah, that's why you tortured your own people. And yet you reached for that glory on the backs of our people. This thing that you've built isn't who we are. Your directorate has fallen, uncle. Clinging to it will not help the reach. Nothing will help the reach. Not anymore. This war has doomed us all. The, re the realm bleeds, Kamea. We're weaker now than we've ever been, and whose fault is that? And soon enough, the sharks will begin to circle. <laughs> I've spent time in the Inner Sphere, Espinoza. I know how this game is played, but right now, in this moment, all that matters is you and us. I'm sure that in your eyes that's true, but mark my words, the Reach is doomed. And if anybody doomed it, it's you, buddy. When the knives fall on the realm we both love, we won't be able to protect it, Kamiya. Nobody will. That's the problem for another day. The truth of the matter, uncle, is that you have only one more decision to make. Will you surrender and save the lives of your soldiers? Or will you allow your pride to condemn them? As I said, niece, this was never about me. Koromadir is yours. No, father, you cannot do this. The Reach depends on the Directorate for survival, for glory. You told me yourself that if we fail, the realm will die. The Directorate has already fallen, Victoria. We've lost, so finally he sees reason. Continuing to fight would only cost more lives. Cost lives? Cost lives? You ordered me to kill 11,000 people on perdition, and now you care about bloodshed? There is an ocean of blood at my hands, father. I spilled it because you told me it was necessary. And it was, but our gambit has failed. It's over, Victoria. I know that's hard for you to accept, but you must stand down. No, you, you may have gone craven, but I am a mech warrior. I will die before I can see defeat. You want this world, Kamea? Come and fight me for it. Your lance against mine, at the tourney grounds. The contest that was denied us. You and me, to the death, for the reach. Aren't you tired of death yet, cousin? Wasn't the Perdition Massacre not enough for you? I did that for the reach, for our people. It was my responsibility. I didn't have a choice, but you don't understand. You never will. And so I will make things easy for you. I don't have to, you don't have to understand why I've done the things I've done. You need only face me in the arena, where I will best you, as I always have, as I was trained to do. You will give me what I want, or your dear Alexander will pay the price. My father was too weak to kill him, but I am not. Accept my challenge, Kamea. Accept it, or I will grind him to a pulp under my battle mech's foot. I almost pity you. You'll have your fight, Victoria, and yours will be the last blood that I spill in this war. Prepare your mech warriors, Renegade. When I face my cousin in the arena, I want your company by my side. 
I've been waiting a long time for this moment. Raju Montgomery will be avenged. Speaking of mentors, that was our mentor in this game. May his training see us through. Have your lance meet me at the tourney grounds. It's long past time we brought this war to a close. That neck you asked for. And so now we get some salvage here. And then we'll set this up. So yeah, uh, besides I pitched the DM. Oh, uh, only person who could reasonably use that um, via DM ruling is me because a divine rogue subclass. Totally agree. Could arguably qualify as the subclass is, uh, is my position in the church. Uh, I, I would, I would go for that. Uh, besides I pitched the DM a more thematically appropriate weapon to replace the loot afterwards. Hopefully it'll end up in my hands after our current quest to finally take out the crime Lord at the root of both rogues backstories. I agree with that. That makes much more sense to me. I, I, even though arguably I, I would, I would say that that would at least be not complete BS. But to me, Holy Avengers are really like, that's a, that's a paladin only thing. Um, and I think that's what makes it special and make and kind of expanding that takes away the specialness of it. I, I totally agree with your plan B, <laughs> or as we say in the channel, option two. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I hope your DM goes for that. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness gracious. So yeah, let's see, what are we doing here? The tourney grounds, we got Highlands. This is going to be a crazy, crazy mission. I actually think two Highlanders, an Atlas and an Atlas. I, I like this. We're going to go in with 380 tons. We need to, this is a crazy, crazy fight. And uh, this is a very appropriate way for this whole game to come to an end. So yeah, let's, let's deploy this. And let's see how we go. I could deploy this Star League Warhammer. I actually could deploy the Star League Warhammer instead of the Highlander, but still, uh, we're dealing with, you know, 10,000 or 1,000 armor versus 1,400 armor. I'd rather have the armor and the ability to jump than uh, some of the other things. So yeah, we're going to go with this Lance, especially with that Atlas's 1,600 armor. Yeah, we're going to go with that. And that Atlas 2 is an absolute beast. Yeah, blow them the fuck up. <laughs> Give no quarter, show no mercy. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to go down and get myself some new water now. I'm not drinking out of the same water as my cat. Oh, so lame. All right, give me two seconds while the game loads the last mission. I am going to get some more water and we're going to do this. <laughs> Cat's gonna drink out of the new water anyway. It's like you know Cleo already. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, yeah. Power of lidded cups. You know, I should really think about lidded cups. Although at this point, I, so I, I generally will get disposable cups 
for her. But yeah, now that she's drank, now that she's drank out of that, if she comes back up, she'll go for that, and I should be safe with my own cup now. I try to keep her from drinking out of these. I am not always successful. All right. We've got it. Let's go get justice for Raju Montgomery. Command interface initiated. <laughs> Incoming transmission. Victoria, I need you to listen to me. The Directorate has fallen. Our armies have been routed. Even as I speak, Restoration forces are closing in on Cordia City. If you kill your cousin now, the entire Reach will fall into anarchy. And if Kamea wins, the Reach is doomed anyway. You've been telling me that for years now. Was it all a lie, father? <laughs> Victoria, this is not the time for a debate. You will attend to my words and obey me, as you always have. I order you to stand down for the good of the Reach. The Directorate is the Reach, father, and I will never stop fighting for it. Wallow in your cowardice. I will win this war in spite of you. She's cut the line. You're going to have to put her in the ground, Lady Arano. She's too far gone for this to end any other way. If that is her choice, then so be it. I'll do whatever I must to save Lord Madeira. Fall in on me, mech warriors. We have one more wrong to right. And so Kamea must survive, but at least she's in an amazing mech. That will help matters. And she... It, and unlike other escort missions where you have to keep somebody alive, Kamea is a really good freaking pilot. So she definitely uh, is not a liability, and especially not in that freaking mech. That thing is awesome. Uh, yeah, let's just sprint up here. That is fine. I think we will go here. Roger that. And yeah, let's go over here. Don't need to tell me twice. Let's begin this. Wow, we still didn't detect them. That's amazing. That actually is amazing. Uh, almost wonder. I'm going to move and just be very, very well protected. Because in all likelihood, the enemy will go first and they will shoot first. So I want to make sure they do as little damage as possible. Let's see. Uh, yeah, let's just do that. Not my... Wow. They're still not here? All right, sprint up there, Behemoth. That's actually good. I want the Atlas Position in front. Confirmed. There they are. He's got an unknown. We got a 70-ton mech and a 100-ton mech, so that's gonna be Victoria. And wait till you see what crazy thing she's in. <laughs> uh, Victoria does not pull punches. Took you long enough, Kamea. I was beginning to wonder if you'd turn tail and run. It wouldn't have been the first time. What are you talking about? You've you attacked us and whatever, whatever, Victoria. <laughs> it's not like we didn't show up at the turning grounds by choice last time. I'm here for you, Victoria, and the justice of House Arano rides with me. How poetic! I have no justice for you, Kamea. Only flowery words, only pain and death and humiliation with Lord Madeira as your audience. Let him go, Victoria. Now. Quit wasting your breath, cousin. We've both waited for this long enough. Come to me. Let's finish this. And it begins. And all these are serious mechs. Let's reserve. Standing by. Hmm. It's kind of a surprise, actually. Can they not target me yet? It's actually kind of a surprise if they can't target me. But, hey, that works. If that's the case, maybe what I should do is just reposition here. Fire at that. Long range. I'm thinking that might actually not be a bad idea. Maybe I'll back off here. Yeah, PPC is gonna be really shitty at that range. Yeah, it's still not great, but you know what? That should be all right. Let's do that. You betcha. As long as I'm far enough away, I should be all right. I will vigilance you though, since you're out in the open. 
and fire. Got Let's it. begin. Nice hit, glitch. Come closer, dear cousin. Come closer. Family feuds fucking up the galaxy. Some things never change. And that is definitely the story of Battletech. Absolutely. It is like medieval Europe all over again. That was absolutely the inspiration for this whole setting. And so the analog would be the Roman Empire was the Star League. And with the fall of the Star League, we lost technology, just endless centuries of warfare. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, totally, totally, totally. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, I think I'm just going to go here. I may jump. Ooh. You know what? I'll jump here. And let's go more for uh, Yeah, let's go for the cataphract. So which one is Space France? That would be the... Um, I think Space France typically is the Lyran Commonwealth, but that might be the Free Worlds League. Um, but I would, I would probably say it's probably more the Lyran Commonwealth would be Space France. Uh, Space AT&T is Comstar. I know that's a, a weird one. For all this but <laughs> but it definitely is uh i would say the no the free worlds league is definitely germany and um the uh the draconis combine is japan uh i mean all of them have different varied influences so it's 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 very very reductionist to just say one is one but um because it's it's just it's so much more complicated than that but um but the very short version of the answer is that you can you can make parallels between all of the various successor states and in a way they're kind of all bad guys in a way it's, it was they did game of thrones better than game of thrones and way back in the 80s and 90s Let's see. How am I doing this? What's think, up, boss? I think we'll just advance you here. Yeah, we're just going to advance you there, and I'm just going to shoot aye. that cataphract more. Yeah. Everyone is kind of shitty, but at the same time, everyone is also kind of awesome. So... <laughs> Acknowledge. Yes, I hear you. I think we'll do... I think we'll do that here. Yep. We'll shoot the cataphract with those ER large lasers. That's the nice part about the Atlas, too. It's a Star League version of the Atlas, but it has much longer range. So I can actually shoot at things with some pretty good Here's weaponry far away. And it's lack of mobility isn't as much of a downside. We're already starting to damage this cataphract, and they haven't even shot me yet, I think. Although they will soon. Yep, there it goes. Armor holding. I hear ya. Far enough away. Maybe jump. I jump here. Still, yep. I'm gonna do that. Actually, what we can do? Ugh, man, that's pretty terrible. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna you jump back, because I can do breaching shot. Yep. Shoot that. Perfect. No problem. I've got enough guns for everyone. Go do more damage to that cataphract. Yeah, the cataphract is sort of a Franken mech. Um, so the Capellans actually came up with this interesting idea. They had um, a bunch of mech factories that, that could make certain parts, and so what they figured out is by having 
The Cataphract is actually a mech that never actually even existed in the Star League era. The, the Capellans invented it by some very interesting industrial ingenuity. And um, so they looked at a couple of their mech factories that were still intact and they were like, you know, we could take an arm from this and we could take a torso from this and we could take marauder legs and we could put it all together and come up with a new mech and we can have these factories working and we can have a mech assembly line and be producing battle mechs uh, by this method. And so they started producing cataphracts. But yeah, the thing obviously doesn't look like it was designed that way because it wasn't designed that way. But this thing packs a hell of a punch. I mean, it's got an AC-10, four medium lasers and a PPC. It's uh, <laughs> like this thing can hurt you. And it's got decent armor. Um, so despite the fact that it was kind of cobbled together in universe, it's uh, it's a hell of a design. Okay, I'm going to jump over here. Yeah, we're going to jump over here and let's make this cataphract dead. I think that's enough of this. The question is, do I do that? Yeah, I don't think so. I think we're just going to open fire on this cataphract. And I missed a lot of that. That sucks. All right, well, some of those missiles still hit the mark anyway. Enemy mech, critical damage detected. Send your lance mates to me, Kamea. And watch. Okay, that king crab is scary as shit. It's got two AC-20s on it, and it could just rip you to shreds. And her king crab is unique. That thing is, that thing is terrifying. Receiving. Ugh. All right, so I may just stay put open fire yep let's fire on the cataphract and let's try to destroy this cataphract i copy boom follow me to victory all right One so now it's target. four against three we now have an advantage actually i'm gonna keep her i'm gonna keep her right there so she's an ace pilot what she can do is she can fire and then move Whereas most of the time I have to move and then fire. But I like her being in front, drawing fire. And the fact that we're in cover only increases Recording. her survivability. Tell me what you need. Actually, I'm thinking I'm going to pull back a little bit and maybe not. A that let's get a clear firing lane and let's shoot at that Jager man. I'm on my way. Actually, I probably should have torso twisted up this way to point this way. Tori is coming. She is coming. <laughs> and boy, is she pissed Copy off. That. And that mech of hers can do so much damage. Wow, that was just happened at the same location. That was awesome. Come on, blow off that torso. Yeah, all right. That would have been nice. Okay, so... So far, this is going according to plan. I want them firing at her first. Major armor loss. And then I'm going to switch them where Kamea will go back into the front line with her Atlas 2. I can jump here. What? That? We're going to point right at where Victoria is going to be coming through. That way, if she shoots at me, <laughs> I am not completely hating life. All right, let's let's do this. Good, we already got the AC crit. There we go. Good, good, good. Ooh, we got the ammo. We, that's a beautiful thing when ammo cooks off in the center torso. That is a scary mech, man. That is a lot. That is a lot of battle mech right there. That is a hundred tons of armor and red. Look at this fucking thing. I forgot it had four medium pulse lasers. Oh my God. I forgot it had medium pulse lasers in it. Holy shit. Okay. So yeah. And flamers because that's okay. So flamers in a mech like this are terrifying because if your mech is running hot, <laughs> if your mech is running hot, flamers do heat damage. Flamers can then shut your mech down and do heat damage, heat structural damage to you and kit you into a death spiral where your mech never powers on. 
it just, especially this mech is insidiously designed. So if you're overheated, it could just continue to pump medium pulse damage into you. And a medium pulse instead of a medium laser, it's a medium, it's a the pulse laser variant of it. I was getting into that earlier and I got distracted. Uh, so an ER version is the same miss as the same um, laser type. So small, medium or large, but with an extended range. A pulse laser fires multiple times. <laughs> so yeah, she essentially has, she may as well have essentially like instead of Four, she might as well have seven medium lasers for the damage output, maybe more. She's got four flamers. All of them are the three tier variant and two AC 20s. So yeah, we, we have to take her out as soon as you, possible. Uh, I may back up one more and we're going to shoot you with a PPC Fire because you, that up. at least will. Um, you know what? Actually, we're going to precision strike and I'm going to turn off the LRM 20. I don't think this is going to work, but boy, oh boy, would it be nice if I could hit you in the head with a PPC. Uh -huh. I, don't, I didn't think that was going to work, but I had to try. <laughs> yeah, that awesome can that awesome hurt me a lot, too. All right. So now it's time for Behemoth to switch out. Losing lots of armor. Oh, I know, Behemoth. I know. Ready for orders. Yep. You you need to back off. And uh, actually, you know what? No, you. OK, you know what? Fine. Precision strike. You awesome. What the hell? You're only going to fire once and then you're going to back up. Confirmed. Boom. OK, nice. Thank goodness. Oh, my God. That just made my life so much easier. Must fall. Mech destroyed. <laughs> Let's back up, <laughs> back up, back up. <laughs> okay, it's still four against three or four against one now. Uh, you have my attention. Yeah, let's let's do that. And yeah, let's just start Location doing some damage to this king crab here. And let's try and keep our distance and stay in cover. It begins. Alright, good. And next to no damage with those LRMs. <laughs> You're as much a victim as you are a murderer, Victoria. Your prayer father raised you to kill in his name. And you are a fool. Your father raised you to believe you were the hero of some ridiculous fairy tale. And you still believe it, even now. I don't know what I believe anymore, but this madness must end. And if you won't stop it, I will. Okay, so we're going to jump. Yep. Let's at least do some damage. And at least I'll have some evasion. So if she targets me, hopefully she won't hit me. Here it comes. Oh my god. Right, she could do devastate up oh, and she's gonna shut down uh Behemoth. Yep, mech shut down. Oof. I'm taking heat too high. Yep. Shut down. yep, and there it is. The mech shut down, just like what I was talking about. <laughs> oh man. Good to go. Alright, uh let's let's get as much evasion as possible. And uh yeah, let's just let's just actually you know what? I'll just stay where I'm at. Yeah, I'll just stay where I'm at. Fire. Hey! <laughs> okay, Commander. let's restart. So at least I've restarted now. I think what I'll do now, though, is I will... Shit. Stay where I'm at? You know what? I'll stay where I'm at. Stay where I'm at. Let's do this. Continue to... Let's trade some fire here. All right, we already got through some armor here. It pays to be four against one. This. Yes, we'll do this. Ten. We can alpha strike with everything. Engaging jump 
but I could also start working my way to her back. May not be perfect, but it'll do. I think she's gonna fixate on Kamea. And I'm hoping I can lure her forward. And oh, there we go. All right. So now she only has half the offensive punch she had before. Oh, except I may have just gotten her attention. That was an. That was a choice. Really? Orders. Really? That that's the choice you made? Okay. Revenge time. That is inexplicably stupid. That is inexplicably stupid. Putting one in the back. I do not know why she would have just shown her back to me like that. What? What was the AI thinking there? All this death, the coup, permission, Mastiff, all of it for nothing. It was always for nothing, Victoria. The director, it was never going to be the return to glory that your father promised. I know, cousin. I know. Our fathers lied to us. There's no future for the Reach. <sighs> You're the hero of nothing, cousin. Nothing at all. I'm sorry, Victoria. You left me no choice. But make no mistake. Justice has been served here today. I am the Sword of Restoration. And Cormadir is free. Mission successful. And that, ladies and gents, is the end of Victoria. Yeah, she definitely lost, uh, she lost her mind there. So that takes care of that. We did take some serious damage. But it doesn't look like we took any component damage. They just blew through the uh, the torso a little bit. Not too bad, all things considered. Holy crap. Yeah, Victoria took her best swing at us, but we're still standing. Yeah, not great salvage there. I guess we'll take our awesome. <laughs> Let's take the awesome and the cataphract and the Jager mech. Sure, that works. And now let's watch, let's watch the end. Today, game, today. <laughs> I began this restoration because my birthright was stolen, and I wanted it back. Not for the people of the Reach, but because it was mine. I wanted war for all the wrong reasons. But on Weldry, I traded that naivete for nobler purpose. Seeing my people suffering with my own eyes, taught me why I must fight. On Artru, I found humility. Blinded by righteousness, I was reckless in my pursuit of power, and it almost cost us the war. On Galdra, I learned to steal my heart. I chose necessity over conscience. A choice that nearly broke me. Finally, on Koromadir, the world of my birth, I found resolve. And standing over my cousin's broken body, victory. Only through these lessons paid for in blood did I become a ruler worthy of title? A high lady prepared to sit the Cormoran throne, the protector of Coromadir, the sword of restoration. But this question still plagues me. <laughs> Am I a hero? Did I sacrifice too much at the altar of victory 
Do my triumphs outweigh my mistakes? War is a clash between conscience and necessity. An ocean of chaos and bloody compromise. War shapes history. And history chooses its heroes. As for you, mercenary, you made the liberation of the Oregon Reach a reality. Every trial I faced would have been my last without your skill on the battlefield. I still don't know if you fought for honor or for the thrill of it, for belief in my cause or just my money. But whether it was your noble heart or mercenary mind, your actions gave us hope. That makes you a hero in the eyes of history. And you know what? It doesn't matter if you believe it. Because others do. As I believed in the heroes of my father's stories. After all, when we are gone, Stories are what remain. And ladies and gents, there we are. <laughs> and so we now have some credits. Uh, I think I can usually just skip it. Um, just pictures from uh, Battletech uh, conventions and whatnot. May as well keep them on the screen for a little bit. Uh, great story. Um, Lady Kamea Arano is one of my favorite uh, NPCs uh, in a lot of games to fight for. Because usually you get these like, you know, spoiled whatever, uh, or they're very thin characters. But Lady Arano, you got to see essentially grow up right beside you as she's fighting in a lot of the same battles you're fighting. And you're kind of... And even when you're not fighting in the same battles, you're still you're still seeing her journey. Um, but yet the game gives you a lot of flexibility to determine whether or not, um, you know, whether it was you just fought for her cause or just wanted her money based on like the dialogue choices. It really doesn't matter, but it gives you the, the freedom to like basically decide for yourself how you kind of went along it. Yeah, load time. What is this, the 90s? <laughs> yeah, every so often it uh, it like hangs uh, in between loading stuff. I don't know if it was um, adding new mechs to the database because we had uh, recovered a couple uh, at the end of the last battle. So it may have been that. That may have been kind of what threw things off. But, uh, but yeah, one of my favorite games. I do enjoy it. And they're they're playing. I think they were just playing some there. <laughs> you can even see some of the uh, some of the um, tabletop stuff shenanigans going on. So uh, so there we go. Battle tech. And we'll see if I end up coming back to this to play some of the DLC. And there are some DLCs. There are flashpoints. There's heavy metal. There's um, some of the urban combat DLC. We've played in urban combat environments, so it's already loaded those. But there's the Raven that we still need to pick up. Yeah, nice rig. <laughs> yeah, right. And so, um, so we'll have to decide whether or not to, uh, if we want to come back to this at some point. If I do, it'll probably be more of a, it's not obviously going to be more of a story based type of thing. It'll be like, yeah, hey, let's go back to that and play a little bit more of that and see if we could go through some of these flashpoints. Some of the flashpoints are pretty crazy. Yeah, oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> and uh, some of the flashpoints are fun. So instead of the, randomly procedural missions that we did. The flashpoints are specifically curated and designed uh, with various scenarios in mind. And they're fun. Uh, they are fun. But it's a lot. Uh, so that was one of the reasons I didn't necessarily want to absolutely commit to that one before going through the story. And it might just be a case of I might just occasionally come back to this when we either complete games or I'm just in the mood for it or what have you. But primarily I wanted to play this because well, post-surgery, I knew I could play this and if I needed to rest my arms, I could just set them on the table. <laughs> so, but at this point, 
uh, my stamina is back. I'm healthy enough. I could I could play other games. But by that point, we were already this far in. I wanted to complete it. So here we are. We have completed the story. That's a better that's a better map with all the all the figurines out. This was Warhammer 40K before Warhammer 40K. I have very fond memories of playing this game in high school where we played the RPG version with Warhammer, who I have not seen since he went to do the solar eclipse. So <laughs> I uh, I don't know if he's just been super busy post uh, post eclipse and catching up on work, but uh, it'd be nice. To, it, hopefully he'll be able to catch up on this either in YouTube or at some point we'll play some Mech Warrior 5 together with him in Phoenix Nade. And that would be kind of fun. Now it'll be that'll be an interesting journey. So Mech Warrior 5 is set in um, Mech Warrior 5 is a game in the same universe as Battletech, but that one you're actually in a mech and you're running around and uh, <laughs> it became to you what Fallout 1 and 2 was to me during a bad medication reaction. Yeah, an outlet of salvation during a medically fucked time. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, and of course, now I'm thinking of it and it's getting a little itchy and I'm like, it's it's in my head. Um, <laughs> it's not actually itchy. I'm just self-conscious about it. Um, but yeah, no, my, my neck is my neck is good at this point. Now it's just a case of getting my arms still um, uh, the strength back in them after not using especially my right arm uh, for three straight months. It just atrophied so quickly, uh, which is super lame that the body does that, <laughs> by the way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hey, hey, Ziltoid, what do we think about that? Oh, so lame. Yeah, why, well, thank you. <laughs> Just call Hans and Prods. I am, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, on that, on that front, I am so lucky that I, I recovered as quickly as I did. I, I don't know how I didn't have, uh, like, permanent nerve damage from all of that crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, and I can only assume I don't have nerve damage because within four or five days... Basically, everything was back. I mean, I didn't have feeling on the bottom of my foot until mid-March. But, I mean, I, I still call that a win. <laughs> so, uh, can we skip that? Oh, yeah, we can skip that. Okay. So, because, uh, yeah, we're, we're getting a little... We're getting a little late here. So, uh, yeah. Ner well, yeah, I definitely can't. I suffered a catastrophic amount of nerd damage. There we go. Marcus, Darius, Samiri, Yang, Farah. Through your courage, skill, and sacrifice, the Reach has been saved, and I have reclaimed my throne. Without any of you, our campaign would have ended in tragedy. I can never adequately repay you for your service to the Reach. I owe you a great debt as well. Without your company's help, I would be dead. I consider it a great honor to call you my friends. And he was part of the crew, as far as I'm concerned, so he's a cool dude. Feelings mutual. We'll miss having you aboard the Argo. That means a great deal to me, Commander McDougal. Thank you. It's a new era for the Reach, and I have your company to thank for it. The Directorate has fallen, Victoria is dead, and my uncle is in chains. You took Espinosa alive. What are you going to do with him? Initially, I was going to try him myself, but Alexander convinced me otherwise. There are risks inherent in holding such a man for any length of time, and the Reach is in a fragile enough state as it is. Don't worry, though. He'll receive his taste of justice soon enough. There is no justice terrible enough for that man. Oh, okay, never mind. Consider my curiosity peak. What did you do with him? <laughs> We've handed him over to Protector Thomas Calderon to be tried as the mastermind of the Perdition Massacre. His war crimes tribunal is being assembled as we speak. The Torians were quite appreciative of the gesture. <laughs> I mean, cash and real estate is good enough reward, right? <laughs> I mean, we did it because she was worth fighting for. The money is a very nice perk. <laughs> I'm sure they were. And that's the last we'll hear of Director Espinoza. He brought his fate upon himself. I'm afraid that our time is growing short, Renegade. We have a great deal of work to do if we're going to recover from this war. But if you have any final questions before we move on to the subject of your pay, I'll be happy to hear them. Uh, the su <laughs> yeah, the subject of our pay is it happens. I can think of nothing I'd rather talk about, but I'm going to go with before we talk money. I'd like to hear what's next for the restoration. After all, we've been through. I feel invested in your success. Doesn't have to be a whole planet. Small habitable moon would suffice, right? <laughs> I was wondering the same thing. I mean, you've retaken your throne and that's wonderful, but the reach is in ruins. How are you planning to rebuild? Slowly, and with great caution, we can't afford to spread ourselves too thin, but neither can we leave our more marginal systems hanging. 
In the short term, we're going to need to secure funding and support from sources outside the region. The economy of the old Oregon Coalition is all but destroyed, and our infrastructure is in incredibly or extremely poor shape. Finding what you're looking for is going to be difficult. You don't have a lot to offer in return. That's true. But we'll do our best with what we have. Political marriages will be invaluable. Our sovereignty is our greatest asset, and I'm still thinking through ways to capitalize on it. Difficult times are ahead, to be sure. But we will weather them, Commander McDougall. The Reach is nothing if not resilient. And now, Renegade, we should move on to discuss your company's compensation. You've certainly earned it. For your exemplary work, both on and off the battlefield, your financial debts are now forgiven. Those were the terms of our arrangement, but you deserve a little more than that, I think. From this moment forward, the Argo is yours. I relinquish her into your control. You may consider her a bonus for a job well done. Hardly a moon, but you know. <laughs> a piece of ancient lost tech, uh, an ancient lost tech dropship? That's not bad bonus compensation. <laughs> Uh, a second token of appreciation is on your way to our mech bay now, Renegade. Please accept it with my compliments. I don't oh, get, often get overpaid with by my clients. I could get used to it. Uh, but yeah, uh, thank you, Kamea. We'll put your gifts to good use. Uh, they say they need money before discussing your pay. Sounds like you're getting paid in exposure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But where are you going to find replacement parts? True. Good. And with that, Renegade, I'm afraid that I must return to matters of state. My people need me, and I must get back to helping where I can. You will always be remembered as friends of the Reach, every one of you. Goodbye, Kamea. Rule wisely and well. Make Raju Montgomery proud. I'll try, Renegade. Believe me, I'll try. Farewell, my friends. I wish you success in your adventures to come. And with that, view screen flickers. I guess that's it. Our contract with Lady Arano is over. The Argo is ours, and we're free to do with whatever we please. Man, it feels weird saying that. We could do whatever we want? We're not beholden to anybody. It's a pretty sweet feeling, I've got to say. So who else wants to go find some new trouble to get into? Peacetime is beautiful and all, but it's starting to feel a little stale in here. I'm game if you are. Trouble is our business, after all. And we've got more than enough battle mechs to handle whatever fate throws our way. Sounds like a challenge to me, as far as fate whatever throws our way. Roger that, Marcus. I'll pull up a fresh batch of contracts. Take your stations, everybody. Let's go find ourselves a new adventure. Now that the war's over and we're debt-free, we can go anywhere we want on the star map. No more hostile nations or sealed borders to worry about. It feels good, I've got to say. <laughs> now that I've reclaimed my throne, the Reach is again at peace. As such, I imagine you're more likely to need this Atlas too than I am. Take it with my compliments, Renegade. You have earned it. Ready to fight. <laughs> yeah, this thing is awesome. That mech you wanted is back online. And then we have the awesome. Yep. And so here's our new and revised mech bay. <clears throat> Just to do a little bit of post-op here. Yeah, we picked up a lot of mechs. We picked up an Orion, a Banshee, a Battlemaster, an awesome, the Atlas II. I mean, this got a little damaged, but we might actually just send this to send this to storage and then really try to recomposite what the hell we're doing up here. But at this point, we now have a very interesting uh, scenario because what we can do now is we theoretically can assemble a completely Star League Lance. Granted, a Phoenix Hawk isn't exactly something to write home about, but uh, it's not bad. <laughs> this is not bad. Um, so anyway. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, but you know what? Let's repair that for now, and I'll figure out what we're doing with all of this later. But in any event, there's our Atlas 2. Let's go back to the star map here. Let's go quickly and briefly talk about what's going on here. We have a travel contact. But yeah, now we can travel to anywhere we want in all of these various places. And at some point, once I start moving, the flashpoints will start spawning and everything else. It's only got a couple hundred thousand miles on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, seriously, that mech is awesome. Let's, uh, let's exit. Let's quit. And we will save and quit. That is a good place to wrap this up. And let's see. So my plan this week, now that Battletech is officially finished, I'm calling it finished because the story is finished. But we may still come back to it just to play flashpoints 
or what have you. There's actually a really interesting heavy metal campaign and an even more gnarly fight than that was. And I don't want to spoil that, but there is an absolutely crazy uh, fight at the end of the heavy metal mini campaign. So if, uh, if there's interest in it, I can run through that. And that's not nearly as time consuming as this is, but we'll see. We'll see what suits our fancy. And in the meantime, as far as the plan for the rest of this week, I have taken Friday off for my birthday and I will be streaming Earthbound on Friday. And I'm going to try and get through as much of that game as possible. At the moment, I am scheduled for physical therapy at four o'clock. So that's kind of annoying and lame. So what I'm going to try to do is reschedule because I didn't realize what was going on when I scheduled that appointment. So what I need to do is uh, when I go to physical therapy tomorrow, I'm going to try to schedule it for the morning. That way I could go to, to physical therapy in the morning, come home, you know, loosen back up and then just play Earthbound the rest of the day uh, until, you know, what have you and see how that goes. So I will update. Uh, I will do an update on Twitter um, to my exact plan uh, on Thursday as opposed to uh, how things go, just in case something else comes up on Friday. But for now, the tentative plan is to just play a crap ton of Earthbound. And if I don't get my schedule changed, what I'll do is I'll just wake up. And I'll just play Earthbound until like three o'clock or something until till, uh, I have to get kind of ready to get going for that. And so that, with, with that under our belts, that's Battletech. Let's see who's, let's get things staged here. Get ready to end here. And while we're doing that, if anybody has any parting words, now would be the time. But let's check out Twitch and see if there's anybody else on that we want to raid out to. Oh, my parasite is playing Fall Guys, huh? Let's let's raid out to him. Let's uh, whoops. Instead of going to mine, <laughs> let's try and do this right. Let's see, all right, now now we've got that. All right, Freakbot, later. <clears throat> Ooh, okay, hydrating, hydrating the raid. Rob, have a good one. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. I had a great time. This was awesome. Battletech is always fun to play through. And with that, everybody, I hope you have a great rest of your week. And most likely, I will see you all on uh, either Friday or, uh, or at some point this weekend. In the meantime, until next time, ciao.